ready for takeoff. We are cleared for takeoff. Five, four, three, two, one. Time to take flight in your community and in your life. This is Audio Airstrike. It's necessary. But one must life. One must life. Yeah, that's one, a Fendi. One must life. That's a Fendi. I'll At drink some that. point in life, one must life. Yeah, I'll drink to that. If yeah. not for the majority of life. Oh, we should do a whole cheers here. Put, I'm going to put some in my cup. I feel like an asshole because I have a glass and you two have red cups. Totally fine. We're, we're desecrating the liquor, so Look, we should I, have to drink it out of the plastic Where cup. I come from, we're used to red cups, so we ain't used to no fancy. Hey, let's so. I grew up. I want a glass now, don't you? I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't trying to... Oh, look at this uppity Negro here. I ain't trying to do all that. I wasn't trying to say that to you. Whole, yes, he was. There's a yes, whole film yes, about a, a Negro named Uppity. He said, he said you need the blood of Christ. There's a whole film about a, neg- a Negro named Uppity that I told Lewis to watch. Because he was, a, it was a, a Formula One driver and he was black. Yeah. And they didn't like that he was, he was self-righteous. And they called him Uppity. And he continued to kick their ass. Very badly as well. Might did, I did you watch it? Might I add, yeah. I what it. film is this? Yeah. It's called Uppity. Mm. There are no jokes in what I'm saying currently. <laughs> I'll let you know when the jokes arrive. They have not made it here yet. <laughs> Keep I, am telling, I am telling you the truth. Yeah, bro. So who wants to do the toast? You, y'all want me to do it? Y'all want Copper to do it? You, Lou, you want to do it? No, it's your show, it. brother. It's your show. I, hey, can you turn me up, though? And you created like us sound podcasting. Yeah, you, yeah, th- you kind of birthed this, so I feel like it's... Come on, Dad. Come on, oh, Dad. I'm, I'm, I'm podcast popular. Come on, Dad. <laughs> I, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to repeat that, but I'll say Dad. No, Poppy, under no circumstances. I, I, I'm not going to say Dad either. <laughs> I'm going to say thank you for introducing me to this art form. Yes, yes. Which yes, is what I was true. trying to say. All of these father terms that you guys have <laughs> <decided laughs> to introduce are completely out of hand and I, Listen, a, a bit abrasive. He started it. I just rolled with it. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Well, I don't have to commit to it. <laughs> I have to relax and get the jokes off. This is like the first podcast that I've done where I've actually been in the room with somebody. I've been quarantined this whole time. This is like the first episode. Well, welcome. 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 That I'm actually around people. Welcome back to the studio that we now call The Hurt Locker. There you go. Oh, really? Okay. Because sometimes when outside was open, niggas would get hurt and they'd have to come home to The Hurt Locker and- Sleep that shit off. Yeah. Sleep that shit off, soldier. Put them in a deprivation chamber, a little sleep hyperbolic therapy. chamber. Yeah, and we get them, we get them right, and we send them back out into the world. They sometimes we can have you ready for brunch. Yeah, here go, Bane, go ahead, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, might as well start off with this toast. Um, I first want to say that I'm proud of the both of you um, for taking the the little tidbits I could give you uh, every week, uh, and you guys have turned that into your own brands. Um, this podcast took a lot of momentum. The first 50 episodes of this show was, I know people say I'm the foundation of it, but you guys was the house that was sitting on it. You know what I mean? Fendi. For a, for a long time. Fendi. Appreciate that. So. Respect. I want to thank you guys for your contribution to this show, and it has never been forgotten. Respect. And I want to also do a toast to more success in the future with what you guys going on. So we got some shit here, up here. on toast. Here, as, here. As a gang, too. No? Yes, here, here. Cheers, 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 cheers John. Mm hmm. I will drink to that. That's good tequila. It is. It meshes well with the, uh, the island breeze. Because it's yeah, still it got the lemon cut to it. You know what I mean? Even though it's the rest boat, it's still, still going to cut like lemon. So. Yeah, that's, that's good. That shit ain't nothing but sugar water and fucking lemonade. I'll take it. I'm a lemonade connoisseur, so. Yes. I know, I I know good lemonade. I to these um, syrups wifey bought. You mix it in the water? You mix it in like, we're using it in coffee. Mm. Oh, word. So there's one that's like just straight simple syrup. Yeah. Then there's one that's honey, uh, Vanilla mm. and cinnamon. See, I would drink this shit with tea. I see. I put it in my coffee. I put that shit right. We in put tea. it in our boozy coffees. Then there's one that's got mm. Mexican chili mm. Mm. in the in the simple syrup. So and y'all that, drink like good coffee too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that is a thing, though. Ethiopian, Ecuadorian. It's a thing. You know it's a thing. Yeah. Same way with tea. It's just like it, tea. And, it's, and really, people the reason think it's we not. drink crazy coffee is around the corner. 
yeah. from her place, the coffee shop that's right there. Yeah. He's crazy with the work. And so it's exceptionally easy to it's actually like, have some dope. <laughs> it's like two blocks. Yeah, yeah. And I can get a, get a bag of this shit. Yeah. And then we have all kind of contraptions. So do we got an AeroPress? We got a like cold brew system, French press. Yo, that nitro brew shit, no bullshit made me throw up. Okay. I'm I shit you not. And I made the mistake of uh, drinking that shit on an empty stomach. That's why. Uh, and then I tried uh, to eat, yeah. but my stomach was already in. Uh, We're going to kill you mode. <laughs> you see, know what I mean? And see, cuz do these crazy pastries. Too. He got this croissant. Mm. He called, I don't know what this shit is, but they said that basically it's a croissant, right? And then they slather one side of it with what they call cookie butter. And then they roll it up into like a muffin form and bake it. And so you've got cookie butter in between the, the doughy flakiness that is a croissant. Well, shit. Mm. So whatever cookie butter means to you. Is it a cronut? No. It's just so still it's on totally croissant. It's rolled into a muffin form. So it's something totally different than a cronut then. Holy shit. Yes. Mm. Because I think what they do is they roll it and then they sit it in a muffin tin and so it blooms kind of. And you can unroll it and then there's just layer upon layer of cookie butter, which (laughs) I think includes like butter, cinnamon, and brown sugar. (laughs) Some sweet shit, yeah, yeah. But it's so good. It's not overly sweet. Yeah, yeah. Well, if he's not slathering it with like sauce and shit. Right, but then that's, okay, I'm going to talk my shit and we're going to leave. Yeah. So that's when not over sweetening your coffee comes in, right? Because if you've got a nice coffee, yeah, right, that's got maybe let's say some some chocolate and toffee undertones, yeah, and you don't over sweeten it, maybe just a splash of oat milk, splash of honey, right? Just enough to bring down the acidity a bit, and then you have this this pastry, right? Yeah, neither one's gonna be off balance. You ever had a pastry and a coffee? And the pastry is super sweet. And then when you go back to your coffee, it, it don't taste right. Not hitting the Yeah, I get yeah. it. Right. So if you balance these two things, right? Like don't make either one extra sweet. You get desayuno. Oh, <laughs> listen, tummy. <laughs> listen, but great to see you guys. Yeah, it's it's great. Like, it's sorry good to, to get see everybody. coffee snob no, for a second. No, no, it's like, not a problem at all, man. Hey, man, I, I got 45 minutes of you for, uh, for tea, bro. So I feel you. <laughs> So how are you guys doing like with uh, everything? Like uh, how was your Memorial Day weekend? I know... We kind of took, uh, I kind of took a break, celebrated, you know, kind of hang back and just kick back for Memorial Day. What'd y'all guys do? I was chilling, man. I worked with this man for a little bit. And then I was at the pool, bro. I was on the roof. I was chilling. Did we work that? We, 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 yeah. They finally opened that pool back up? Yeah, man. Did we work that? We, we worked that, what, that Friday? Sure. Yeah. And then I went to Philly for my anniversary. Yeah. Because nice. I, I worked at OT, John, and I trapped the fucking shit with you, and we went to the pool. That yeah. pool ain't no pool, though. Can you call, all right, let's talk about this. Can you call a pool a pool? If it's three feet deep. You just said it's a pool. Across? Deep. Pause. Mm. It's um way <laughs> I mean, in the water. You know what I'm saying? The, way. <laughs> it looks fucking cool, though. It looks in fucking cool. Water. It looks cool. It and it's a nice over, refresher, man. but it's like, yo, don't call it a pool. Call it, you know, is call it, it refreshing? Nah, I mean, it, it is, it is. Lou, you are a smaller man than me, and this is the this is what people really need to know. Does three feet of water... Your shin might get wet in there. <laughs> does three feet of water broach your balls? <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> Pause. We're calling that. Right. I'm calling that. Pause. What are you asking that for? What are you asking that for? Does it does it touch your nuts? Is How high may I have to lift my leg? <laughs> like if we're fighting and he's winning and I need to kick him in the nuts, bro. How high do I have to lift my leg? You're higher than that, bro. Dude, you're taller than him. I'm not so that you, you short. Don't take... You act like I'm Tory Lanes, bro. Like I'm not that right. short. I'm asking: Is in the three feet of water? No, bro. Do your Balls like then, maybe then, just teabag the water. Then doggone it, just say that. Say, hey, if we ever got into it and I had to kick you, I caught it, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, what the world is? <laughs> I can't ask that. <laughs> it's just outrageous it for is, you to ask. Is. You that. can ask whatever you'd like. It's just that's fucking crazy. You just gotta be careful how you wing it. <laughs> People want to know. Nobody wants. I promise you, nobody. Someone wants to wanted know. to know. <laughs> no one. I've knows. made enough short jokes that people want to know the depth and breadth of the situation. The depth and breath. I don't mean I want to know. Yeah. Lord knows. You got to relax, bro. All right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Moving right along. So, okay. So, Lou got a problem with his baptismal pool. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was my anniversary. I had a great time. I, I didn't have any baptismal pools. Um, we went to Cuba Libre. 
Oh, nice. Um, and that so, sounds like somewhere far and cool. Where is it? No, nah, it's a uh, restaurant chain. Oh, I see. I ain't uh, know. I ain't out the, here like that. I think we'll we'll call it Cuban inspiration as yeah. to not uh, disrespect anyone that's a, you know maybe a more tried and true Cuban. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I had a they good got experience. one in DC. Yeah, yeah, they got one in DC. They yeah. got one in Philly. We went to the Philly Joan. It's Cuban. A uh, Philly. We went to the Philly Joan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you a bull now? We did. You a bull now? A, we did a full flight of rum. We did empanadas, and uh-huh. then we did. They had like this. I don't know how to say it in uh, Cuban. Speak Spanish, right? Correct. All right. I don't know how to say it in Spanish, but it was like a a, a medley of meat, uh-huh. grilled meats. It was uh, there was some carne asada, nice, some lobster, nice, some shrimp, chicken, and sausage. Oh, so y'all got your shit off. And then we had the. the that sounds like a nice spread. Yeah, we had, we had plantains. We had yeah, nice. some beans. We had it's like that. a fucking feast. Y'all then, had a feast. And then they bring us flan because it was the anniversary. Nice. Mm. That shit was bomb. Flan is, yeah. We Tres were, leches is good too. It was really good. Let yeah. me tell you how good it was. We took four bites collectively because we were so goddamn full off of the 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 trio of um, rum flights that we both had. She had three. I had three. Um, we had two empanadas that we split and they were rather large. Um, the the whole meat medley, no homo, and then rice and beans and plantains. And then they, and they were like, oh, surprise, dessert. And we were like, yeah, we're going to try this like out of yeah, respect. You, you tapped out a long time ago. You said, I'm going to have a little I've bit though. I've been done, yeah. but I just keep eating because this shit is good and like yeah. I'm not leaving this lobster in here. Fact. I don't blame you. Yeah. I definitely don't blame you. Yeah, so it was, but it was bomb. We had a great weekend. Um, she got me this ring. Nice. Um, I, Shout out to wifey. That's I funny. got her Swavosky earrings. Nice. And pierced her ears. Nice. Oh, mm. nice. That's dope. Yo, I like the. Uh, no, 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 no. Like me. Oh, I oh, thought you like paid for it. I personally. Well, ice and a needle. Nah, I, I bought the gun off Amazon and. Oh, y'all did it proper, proper. Alcohol them them lobes, and like a bloop. Mm. Yeah, it's um, a little bit of a moment. It it is in that I've never done it before, and I just hopped out the window. It was like I think I can do that shit. Like yeah. I've seen I've seen who they hire to pull that trigger. <laughs> also, I'm a big fan of those fucking Swarovski crystals. Yeah, I'm trying to be more uh more uh like uh what's the word <laughs> like more aware like ecologically. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like I'm kind of off diamonds, and I really like the Swarovski crystal earrings. Swarovski so I gotta are be very nice. I gotta be like conscious with my with my ice, if you will. Yeah, no, nah, she's got a like. I got diamonds, but like I don't want to buy any more. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I get that. I'm cool. I'm buying any more. When her ears heal, heal, she'll have a, a carrot yeah. of Swarovski in each ear. Those are and they're very nice. Yo. And she has a Swarovski yeah. tennis bracelet to match. They make these ill ass fucking Marvel joints, and they got a Batman joint. Yo. I know. Swarovski's dope. Yeah, hell like, yeah. They do dope shit. Fucking right. You might they as well collect Fucking right. I got Swarovski shirts, bro. Like that people have taken the individual crystals and, and did like the BBC design and yeah. shit oh, wow. like that. I fuck with Swarovski, bro. That's like one That's of my what favorite I'm brands, I don't know bro. like why people act. Because if it's, you know, because if it's not diamonds. Like, I mean, I right, cool. So, like who told you the diamonds were cool? cool. Sure I own were, some of those too, guy. But I'm like, sure they were from so uh, what? Ca- what's it? Uh, you know the, how the people are. You know how people are. I don't really care. People going, and you try to, anytime you do something that makes you separate you and makes you individual, somebody always got to hate. Might as well just keep on doing what you're doing. Because regardless of whatever you do, they're going to have something to say. That's a fact. Fendi. Yep. Absolutely. Well, in case you uh, haven't noticed, this is Audio Airstrike, and this is episode hey. 179. Jesus I'm Everett Christ, Hall I've McNeil. never been this high before. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been consistent, brother. I've been consistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of shows, but look, you said a hundred and what? A hundred and seventy nine. Yeah, nah, I've never been this. We're high nearing a hundred and eighty now. Um, I'm Everett Hall McNeil, and in case you haven't paid attention to the voices that I have as guests, at one point in time during the early days of Audio Airstrike, these were two of my former co-hosts. Funny how life comes full circle. To the left of me is the. Right hand man when I first started this consistently. That part. This is Lou. That part. To 
the left of me is somebody that helped me on the back end of audio airstrike in the early days, paid for the equipment so I could do this when I didn't have money. I have to make this introduction so people understand honestly. Think about it that so way. that way there isn't so I that way there isn't no questions. Somebody that turned around and invested in this podcast without knowing the overall business. And then with that, I traded in my intellect and gave it to him. And now he has built an entire brand, 1600 The Everyday Weekend. You know him from the Baseline Podcast, which is celebrating DMV hip hop. Ladies and gentlemen, my second guest at this time is none other than Capo. Delport. Quite the introduction. Hello. I didn't, I didn't know we were going there. And I didn't realize that's how that was interpreted until right now. I bought equipment because we needed equipment. That part. Yeah. It wasn't nothing else. It was just like, well, we're po- we're doing this regularly. We should just have our own shit. Like, E keeps renting shit. Like, mm-hmm. no, we're just going to buy. Maybe it won't be as nice, but we'll have our own shit and we'll build from it. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, full circle. You're welcome. Full, <laughs> full circle. You're welcome. Um, yeah. We own it all. That yeah. part. We own it all. That part. Now, now all of us are in a position. We own our own equipment. We're still on good. Everybody's still on good terms. Yes, sir. Any of these two can call me and ask me any questions they want. Mm-hmm. I've done it. Yeah, it's not a problem for sure. And 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 I hope that the door continues to stay open. Likewise, because the door is always going to yeah, stay yeah. open on my end. Y'all yeah, treated yeah. me with nothing you need, but respect. Yeah. Whatever you need, bro. I'm here. Yeah, I'm that here. part. Absolutely. The door is always going to remain open and I'm always going to keep it where it's a state of respect. For sure. Now, For sure. with that being said, speaking of state of respect, here we go. We want to talk about the state of boxing after y'all know how I am with these transitions. We want to. <laughs> God body. <laughs> All right. So I want to get to talking about Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather. And I'm going to start off with my take on some of these and then y'all take it from there how y'all want to do it. They had the fight, and in my personal opinion, my first question is, is this the fault of the old school promoters early on that were screwing over boxers? Here's the reason why I'm saying that. We all know Mike Tyson, right? Yeah. Correct. Don King was screwing him over on potential financial issues which caused Mike Tyson to attack him Mm -hmm. so for years there have been interviews and stories of old school promoters manipulating the system so they can get the most money at the gate leave the boxer with a certain number of percentage that maybe was not at his worth and now all these years later Due to the internet and the wealth of information that is available that was not available back then in the 80s and 90s right in front of your face. Now these boxers understand that not only am I a boxer, I am a brand. And you are going to pay me as such because people are coming to see me. I can monetize that audience myself. I don't need you necessarily as a promotion. So now you have to pay me as such. What we saw with this fight was a legal bank robbing. Now we'll break it down like this. If you're a fan of pure boxing and the art of it, I can see why you're upset. You shouldn't have been there. Yeah. It wasn't for you. Yep. I could see why you might be upset. At the same time, why would you pay $50 for an exhibition fight with a YouTuber involved? It, you shouldn't have been there. It wasn't for you. Yeah. Right. But it's always been about the show, right? And it's in some capacity. Like it's still, people, like, all of these things qualify as entertainment. Yeah. And, and that's, that's kind of like the thesis to my whole, my whole thought process behind this is that it's always been a show. It's always been about entertainment. So it didn't deviate too much. Did it deviate from technicalities, from traditions? Yeah, but like, didn't the mob used to run boxing at some point? Like, this shit is going to continue, right? It's entertainment. Entertainment yeah. and, uh, across the board is like this, unfortunately. It, inter, it, uh, th- th- hey, guys, unfortunately, the shit you're entertained by is pretty standard. Yeah. So, 
it's pretty easy to pony up a purse for standardized entertainment. This was a a gladiator of sport yeah. <laughs> going up against a gladiator of digital content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Who happened to have some stature to him. I'm not saying he's a little guy. And what we saw was Mayweather he got his big ass knocked out <laughs> holding him up so that they could carry on this fight to the bag. He got his big ass right, knocked so out. You know, you know, real quick, you know his response to that was, hey man, y'all shut the F up. That's not what happened. Of no, course he's gonna no, say that, but no, I'm just that, saying. We saw you. You held a nigga larger than you up. That is a large man. He should mm-hmm. be saying that. Cause let's let's not let's not get too far away from the point that Mayweather as a businessman. Period. He's a businessman. He's a fucking genius, this one. Yeah. He owns nine fucking skyscrapers in New York and shit. Like, this man is, I don't know where this notion began, maybe since the beginning of sport, that if you're in sport, you're stupid. That's not, that's that's false. No, they- So very false. Well, they wanted to it's program the athletes that way. Think about it. If I'm an organization and I'm a front office, let's say- you don't have that business knowledge. I'm just hypothetically, I ain't throwing no shade. Let's say hypothetically you don't have that business knowledge. Capo does. Y'all have both got the same amount of talent. But because he has the knowledge of business and knows his worth more, I got to pay him more. And if I'm a shrewd businessman, I don't feel like paying him. And so I'm going to hire you. And, and, and I'm going to put the battery in your back be- to focus on your talent while I'm collecting more at the gate and giving you a certain percentage. It's not going to be the same percentage as if he was working with somebody else. It's going to be higher. Why? Because he knows his business. Yeah. Like, hey, creatives, know your worth. That's all I'm saying. Because that exactly yeah. what he's saying happens, right? It happens all the time. We've had <laughs> this conversation before. Like, I, I've called him and I was like, yo, cats need to put some respect on your name. Like, from one person getting it to another, bro, you really out here doing it. Like, I think that's part of the problem is too too often in our culture right people don't big each other up in that way like i just called him was like yo you the man bro like you out here you know what i'm saying like i went to school you went to school he's already doing it like you know what i mean full time that's part of the culture is that enough people aren't giving each other game aren't giving each other the big up you know what i mean yep and i think still this and i and i and it's you know what's sad we had this conversation when we were in our late 20s and it still is happening. Yeah. But I, I, I want to I wanna point one thing. Yeah, out. go ahead. Giving game and like doing it is two different things. Very different. Church. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Church. And so like the interesting thing with me and what I've done and what I do is like as much as like you speak to what I like have done, right? Like for me. Um, there's been greater things that I've done in collectives and um, I think it's important to be able to work in a team I think it's important to be able to recognize the value someone else brings I don't remember who I was working with recently but they know that I do design work and there was a logo for one of the brands that we were looking at at the time I don't remember which one but I don't know it's one of the brands and they were like, you did that logo, right? And I was like, no. And it was like, what do you mean, though? And I was like, I didn't do the logo. You asked me a question, I answered it. I didn't do the logo. <laughs> and it was like, well, why not? And I was like, I just didn't feel like I was the best man for the job. Yeah. And they were like, well, what do you mean? Your, your shit's fire. And I was like, thank you. Again. However. Sometimes I'm too close to the project. Yeah. And I need someone else to design it. And it's Okay. And I've done it before and it works. Mm-hmm. I will pay people to do design work for me just because I can design doesn't mean I'm the, the, the man for the job. Yeah. And I think that humility and creatives getting to the bag is important. Knowing when to be like, yo, I'm, cre- I'm still creative and I'm no less creative because I want to tap in person A, B, C, X, Y, Z to do this this task like maybe i just i want that vibe yeah that's okay because your end goal isn't to take credit for it all right yeah your end goal is the 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 proper dissemination of a thought or storyline so with all that being said right and with you breaking it down like that 
like the artist being smart enough, do you think that that makes Mayweather the smartest athlete ever? Is he? Because I, I would say yes. This is your question. Yeah. I just transitioned the motherfucker. Let, y'all let me know because I'm. that's why I asked it. I'm curious. Because I think so. I, I'm convinced he is. You can't tell me otherwise. Nah. Who? Smartest? Smartest. Mo- most intelligent. Mike. Because what Mayweather is doing was blueprinted. But okay, fair. But did, I don't know if this meme is true or not. But did, did but did y'all see it where it said that Mayweather made more in this fight than Mike did in his 15 years of playing? Sure. Hmm. And I believe that to be true, and I'm almost certain it it's is. not far fetched for me. Right. But we're talking about what 30 years apart. I swanting up, open the market up. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. <laughs> it's like that's that's yeah. not a fair yeah. comparison, just the sheer dollars. Sure. Like Mike made more than a nigga 30 years before him. Sure. That's that's not a fair measurement, right? But the So are you speaking to legacy? I no, I'm speaking to business, right? Mm. Mike. We don't give credit enough to Mike, right? I don't think Nike came to Michael Jordan and was like, hey, you're doing really well. We're going to give you your own business from this, the Jordan brand. Nah. Sure. Yeah. Mike hired the right people or had yeah. the idea that yeah. I am a brand. Yeah, I am Jordan brand. And yeah. it took him longer to get there than most athletes today because yeah. he created the idea that I am a brand. Sure. Right. Dr. J didn't have that. Larry Bird didn't have that. Magic Johnson didn't have that. None of them guys had that. Mike was the first basketball athlete brand. Sure. And it still lives. And all of them are still trying to do Mike. Yep. And suffice it to no say, one's TM- broke the mold. TMT will never be Jordan Brand. We can all agree to that, right? No. Yeah, no it's, one's it's too broke legend. The mold. Yeah. Jordan Brand is too legendary. Yeah. What do you want to wear that Mayweather? Nothing makes nothing. Like wait, wait, follow me. Not just nothing on a date, and it's gonna get you some ass. Or wear out tonight, and it may get the attention of the woman that you would like to get some ass from. You do what I'm saying? It hits different. When does that happen? That it doesn't happen. Yeah. The only person that can, there's no chick checking for you in the LeBrons. No. Nope. Now in some ones. The right ones. <laughs> get the right one. The right color scheme. You fucking right. I put them breads on. It's a problem in these streets. That's why I don't go out in them, bro. If I go out, I'm going to go out. But Jay's. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So it's a difference. It ain't it's LeBron's. A difference yeah. It's a difference. Yeah. It. It's different. Yeah, it's definitely a difference, man. And the reason why I pose that question is because despite what people have made fun of him for about him reading, look, throw it out the window. This guy is a sponge when it comes to information, when it comes to sponge about running a business. I ain't say that for like a shot at him. I'm just saying like, that's what people, <laughs> people literally took that clip that Charlamagne no, paid no, and no, ran with no, it. I'm, this is why I'm laughing. He's, <laughs> he's so smart. It is funny that he can't read. Right. <laughs> no, just because it's like, I didn't need to read. Him. <laughs> we talking about practice? <laughs> I don't need to read him. Rich, like, like not, no shit. I'm not laughing at him like, oh, you're less than. I'm yeah. laughing because it's like, nigga, I don't have that kind of money. And <laughs> I, I, can't, read. I can read very well. Maybe they're telling us we need to learn the wrong shit. Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck do I need to read if I can make Mayweather money? Right. Maybe I should have learned to use my dukes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Right. Maybe if I could put my dukes up a little better, then I wouldn't I might, have yeah. to read. Yeah. Because the nigga that I'm paying to read would be scared of my dukes. Right. <laughs> that is true. I ain't think of it like that way. Yeah. Scared of a duke his ass up. Boy, Man, I wish you would play with this paperwork. <laughs> I can read black and blue. That's what you want me. <laughs> I can't stand this nigga, man. I cannot stand this nigga, boy. Yeah, I can't. I can read. 
<laughs> oh my god. That's dude, a set fucking... he better do that paperwork right. And I'm gonna hire a second I'm gonna hire and I'm gonna hire a second accountant. Yo, it's all good, it's all good. And I'm gonna hire Yo, a second accountant. You, and if both y'all get it wrong, both y'all getting right hooks. Y- y'all both can I hope you both can fight. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all get the right hand of God Because I right. can tell you Which of the three of us can So, <laughs> so gentlemen Collectively Can you fight? Because I can and, and, and look One dude Who knows how to actually fight Can easily best Three men that don't know how If right? you don't know how to, I actually know how to fight Fight He's So saying, all that crazy shit you doing I know how to get around That, that bullshit you doing First of all That's that, different that, If you gotta that, fight bro A lot of the crazy shit That niggas that can't do that that can't fight do is a flailing. If you just let it happen, yeah, just just, just step back, just be like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna wait for you to get tired then, <laughs> and then right, because <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 like that that's, that that that's how they, that's how they do. Like yeah. a lot of people that don't know the mental and it's like it's, it's chess, it's, it's chess. All, yeah. People that can't fight are high energy. Yeah, mm-hmm. they be. <laughs> Yeah, that's all you hear, all and you be like, way. "You didn't hit nobody yet, yeah. right?" You got to say that energy for hitting. Yeah, Somewhere. all that. All, it's tap dancing. It's what it was. What it's you called? You're tap dancing. Listen, I'm. I've seen it a million times. A whole lot of flailing. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna say this, Logan Paul. You was flailing, throwing a whole bunch of rights and lefts, and half of them you didn't went to connect. Sleep. I'm just saying. You went to sleep. I'm just saying. I know what I saw. And then you hugged hey, the man for eight rounds. I guess you did last. Like I'm just I saying. I would enjoy a eight round nap. Hey, shout outs to you. For you the got, money paid, he got but paid. Shout Fuck outs to right. you. Yeah. Man, you got paid, but I mean, to, I I can I can actually go to sleep for this month. I'm yeah. going to sleep. <laughs> now I'm, I'm <laughs> just with a little bit of assistance. Don't even have a clause in it that says uh, 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 he hit you. Go to sleep. Uh, a si- a signee may become drowsy. Nigga, I'm going to sleep <laughs> night <laughs> for all night. 75 mil <laughs> night night. So let me ask Harmonic y'all this, man: good, good Is night. celebrity Harmonious. exhibitions in the future going to help or hurt the sport of boxing? And here's why I'm saying this. You're going to have people that might come out of the woodworks. You're going to have, because what I'm starting to notice now is a lot of YouTubers and TikTokers are starting to try to follow Logan Paul and Jake Paul's blueprint in terms of getting in the box. It's been like that for years. Okay. It's been like that for years. Yeah, I know, but it's really- They've them white boys for years. But it's kicking, this boxing trail is kicking up after seeing what those two have done. Oh, yeah, So, in my personal opinion- Jake has, regardless of what anybody wants to say, he's trained to get to a certain point. Yeah. He understands. I look at it like wrestling. Jake is the problem child gimmick when those cameras are on. He's probably not that way when the cameras are off. Now, I don't know that, man. I'm just assuming. Logan, same way. Logan knows how to act like a jerk and get under people's skin if he wanted to. He just doesn't do it as good as his bro- as younger brother does. However... The pole point I'm trying to make is that now you got people that think because they saw Logan last eight rounds with Floyd, they're going to be brazen and get into something that they may not be as technically sound in for a come up. I don't have a problem with people getting their money, but understand what you're getting yourself into before you just think. And being a novice and being like, oh, I'm going to get into the ring. Now, have some, you need to have some experience and some technical training before you just you roll up in there. You can't challenge Ali because you think you can box. No, I don't have a problem with... He knows I don't have a problem. Box. <laughs> I don't have a problem with celebrities coming in and possibly bringing casual fans that can help the sport, but know your place. You ain't like, you know... Why, does, why do this, these celebrity bouts, right... Have to impact the sport, right? For instance, right? The NBA literally puts on a celebrity basketball game during the All Star weekend. They bring out their best players, and then they say, you know what? To warm you guys up, we're going to put a bunch of fuckheads out here on the court. And not that they're bad people, they just aren't basketball players. Right. That's not it. It's the. It's not entertaining for a true basketball fan, but it draws an audience. So I don't think it's a negative thing for 
um, combat sports. I want to be specific in saying that. Boxing has been headed downhill way before celebrities got involved. MMA is king, bro. MMA has been far more interesting, king. has been drawn to the box office dollars, the, the pay-per-view dollars, what, what have you, for a long time. Mm-hmm. Boxing isn't interesting anymore. I'm going to tell you why. In my dissertation. Too many politics? No. Nope. No heavyweights. We want to see <laughs> fucking gladiators <laughs> knock fucking gladiators out. Yeah. And uh-huh. we don't get it anymore. Yeah. Everybody that boxes is lightweight, middleweight. Just like it wants ancient weight. Rome and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's nobody big. Yeah. When boxing Paul was its Zay, biggest, yo. there were large men fighting. It was the heavyweight bouts were the ones. You may get a lighter weight joint in that pay-per-view. But they were all trying to get to heavyweight to get to the money. It was like gargantuans, like men you could not fathom even asking to move out of your way in the grocery store. Well, that even goes back to slavery too, right? Fighting. That was a thing. We don't care. So now the new gladiator is any man that can take down another man. But there are classes, if I'm not mistaken, in MMA. Yeah, there are. There There definitely are. 100%. You're not about to be some featherweight-ass dude trying to box a fucking heavyweight. You're going to get your little ass knocked out. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm saying that it it still has to feel like you can't do it. Yeah. For me to spend $60, $80, $100 to see it. When it's niggas that's me and Lou size fighting... We just be like, well, we could do that. We could re- y- y'all want to pay to see me and Lou fight? <laughs> How much y'all got? Y'all got? Hey, look, listen. <laughs> me and this nigga will put on a show for like thirty-seven <laughs> fifty by a thousand of y'all. Hmm, that's a good number, right? I think so. All right, we can do that. I, I mean, I used to train as a kid, so I know I know what that's, it goes that's to. That's what like, I'm saying. But... It, that's why it's a double-edged sword for me because it's like I trained no, for let's real. Make it fifty. How to fight? We gotta and pay it's people. like. So it's, I think it waters down the sport a little bit, but I mean, I, I did watch celebrity death matches as a kid. I exactly. love seeing this type of thing. We just have to compartmentalize uh, it that way, right? That's what this it is. This is yeah. not professional sport. We know that. It's an exhibition. I mean, they make it very clear. It's just sure, people are Floyd just like, I don't want to see he that. He was a professional. Yeah. Floyd is not a professional boxer anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a showman. Right? So we didn't watch a professional boxer throw hands. <laughs> fight a YouTuber. Yeah. We watched... Floyd Mayweather yeah. fight. fight a YouTuber. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. That's dope. That's Kimbo on The reason next we don't level, like it bro. is right. because we're trying to make it something it ain't. Well, and me. it's because he was a very technical boxer. I think that's what it is. Well, I yeah, also, but he's a very paid boxer for a reason. Well, I also look at it, you gotta look at it from this way too. I think the reason why people did not like this matchup. They looked at Logan's record. They looked at Mayweather's record. Some people looked at Mayweather. Looked You're at looking Lo- at his professional record. I get that. I get that. But that's the mistake that people did. They looked yeah. at that and they was like, why is Mayweather even in the ring with this dude? And then Mayweather was like, well, hold on. I've only I'm fought getting one exhibition, two exhibition fights. Yeah. He's like, I'm getting, y'all want to see me go into a regular fight like normal and record on the line and this for and that. For less money. For less money. <laughs> and I can fight him for way more money than y'all gonna pay me. He's bigger than boxing, period. Yeah. He's bigger than boxing now. He just happens to be able to still box. That's what it is. No. and Did you and, see the branding <laughs> for the fucking McGregor fight, the way they branded that shit out? I don't want to, I don't want, look, I don't want to say, I don't want that statement because you're right to sound like, a discredit to the sport of boxing. Boxing is. Oh amazing. no! Not even a discredit to boxing. He's just bigger than the sport. He's, yeah, he's bigger than the sport. And that's not to say anything bad about boxing because it's still like you still get in there and get your ass whooped. It's like how but the Rock just, is bigger than wrestling. One hundred percent. It's the best way to put it. The Rock is infinitely bigger than any wrestling found federation there is. Period. 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 As a single entity. Period. He's just he's just bigger than fucking. Oh no! What they say? They say per. <laughs> they say both, I think, no. Period. Have, it's with a T. Have times period. Have times period. Have time period. 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 Everett. Yeah. 
<laughs> Times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if y'all don't stop making sexual advances at Benzino's daughter, I'm going to get all of you niggas out of here. <laughs> Which I don't even understand the sexual advances. You guys have got to cut it up. Yuck. You guys have got to. Gross. You cannot. I mean, I don't know what you expect from me. E. You want me to come out here and be PC? No, gross. They can't do that. It's not for me. I don't like it. I knew what I was getting into when I brought y'all back on this nasty. episode. I knew exactly what I was That's why I brought y'all back. They can't. Look, they be like, ooh, thirst trap from, from Koi Ray. And I'd be like, thirst trap? Yeah. No, from that's gross. Baby Benzo? That's gross. But you know, she does have this song with uh, Gunna called Slide Brud. Ooh, she got one with that jump and I hate her music let's be clear but that song I can't even say I hate her music anymore because that song can I be honest that shit is good that's can a I, summer jam can I be honest come on if Dej Loaf was light skin we never see Coyle Ray and if Dej Loaf didn't just up and disappear out of nowhere from the from the spotlight she left for a reason it wasn't I'm not fault. I'm not saying anything what I'm, not I'm saying blame. Is, I'm not saying anything if just saying. The colorism didn't exist, in, or, or it did, and... Is it Dej- that deep? It is. Or was it because Dej Love dressed like a dude, and Cola Roy is barely clothed? Come on. Why did Dej Love dis- disappear? I didn't get the memo on that. So what happened? It's deeper than she just disappeared. It was some industry blackballing going on. Oh, it's one of those. Yeah. Now, Cola Ray, her daddy is Benzino. Yeah. If so she's know. plantish. Yeah, she's uh, plantish. Ag- she's a Jace. Yeah, she's pl- how is she's placed a Jace. Yeah. Do you know what her daddy owns? Yeah, I'm hip. What does he own, Lewis? Source. Yeah, I'm, I'm hip. I know who Benzino is. I know his cultural impact. I'm very aware. I'm very aware. But it's like plant a Jace. Because what if she didn't want to do it? Then no one would say that shit. She happens to have some talent. I didn't think so. And then I listened to that slide song with Gunna, and I was like. Oh, okay. So this other, sh- got it. Because if you keep making this, you're fucking out of here. And she's already got one with Gunna, arguably one of the bigger new dudes of the Absolutely. melodic new school cats, Absolutely. right? Like Absolutely, right up there with Don shit- Tolliver and all them. All right, wait, wait, wait. I know this is not on the script, right? But I, ha- I have to ask because when people bring up like Don Tolliver, all these other people, right? Right. Um, I think they're all b- like O3 Greedo's sons. Hmm. O three O three Greedo was the first dude to come out with that kind of sound. Uh, He's got part. the mixtapes to prove it, dude. Like uh, that's just how the dude sounds. And I and, and and maybe this is conspiracy theory here, but it's like I feel like people were hip to him because people were hip to him, and then he he was going away for the twenty, and there was a little let's go find something like him because listen to that sound, it's just so good. Yeah, if you listen to like old O three Greedo, it's Good. It's the shit they put out now. Him, there's Thug. A, I feel like those are the people that are. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with being influenced and then taking that sound and putting it. It fucks me up because I hear it. I'm just like, I'd rather listen to Greedo now, and that's fucked up to say because Don Oliver, his last eight was fucking. What the fuck? That right. shit was so, so good. So so good. No Bryson. I don't have a problem with Bryson. Different inflection of the voice. That's more nasally. I'm talking about the the very Greedo, very Donta Oliver. That that's inflection of their voice. Nah, nah, nah. Like that's and how the Greedo too. sound. Yeah, and the, the cadence, the voice, okay. everything is okay. Greedo. Okay. Some of them Bryson, yeah, but no, not the dudes. Which, I, I I guess my thought was like when I brought up Bryson was like the merging of melody and and like like street hymnals. But I get what you're saying as far as the 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 tonality of them. The well, now I'm thinking to that point, right? Who before Bryson? That did it that good anyway. They weren't quite trappy. Yeah. Before him was... That's still a good point. But his follow-ups for me. I mean, this isn't... No, 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 no. He, Sorry, I'm this not, isn't a music podcast, but I'm like that first... I'm not comparing artist to artist. Yeah, I mean, I that first comparing... Bryson project. Shoo, she's... It's a, it's, a good, it's a good break away from this. We can come right back to this. So... Mm-hmm. One of the Let's things talk. that I want to talk about is the lack of respect that seems to be going on for black athletes. We've had this conversation on here before. 
Many of you know uh, in the early days of Audio Airstrike, the, one of the biggest things that we covered extensively was the Colin Kaepernick situation. We covered yes. it for like a number of episodes. Yeah. So we couldn't. We couldn't not. Yeah. Right. Not so, in good conscience. What we have here is a situation where Naomi Osaka has stepped down and backs out of the Wimbledon in Berlin. Oh, she, she backed out of Wimbledon too? Yeah. I know the French Open. But she did Wimbledon. She she backs she backed out of Wimbledon too in Berlin, um, for mental health reasons. That and was the original one, yeah. Yeah, no, the original one was the French Open. Was it French Open and then the Wimbledon after? Mm. French Open was first. She said she just mm. didn't want to do press. She was gonna play, and then it and was then they the fined subsequent her. And she was one, like, yes. you know what? I'm yes. not gonna get fined for every round, yeah, so yeah. I'm just good. I'm cool. Yeah. And then <laughs> the, the the like. French Open president puts out a statement about what she said and then goes, I don't want to answer any questions. No, 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 bitch. Let's talk about it because you want her to talk about it while you make trillions of dollars off of her talking. And all she's saying is, I'll play the game. I'm good on the talking. Have you ever watched full press conferences that athletes have to deal with? No. They're atrocious. They're nauseating. They're disgusting. Sure, but it's part of it. You sign up for that. Right. Why do I have to? I'm not saying, and I would never tell somebody what I'm they're not supposed saying to I do. I won't come to a press conference. I'm saying, do a better job. <laughs> yeah, guess. because especially if you're an interviewer, like That's you have to ask. I guess. Here's the thing about when you're interviewing people. All right, Lou. I can. I got questions for you. If all I'm saying, it's not. It's sorry. It's it's no not even a colorism thing for me, right? It's you could I be fucking I, purple for all I, I care. Didn't say nothing about colors. When you get into whatever you're getting into, there's certain rules, regulate regulations, and traditions that are meant to be followed. This is one of the oldest institutions of the sport that we're talking about. Part of doing that, whether you're black, purple, caramel, whatever the fuck you are, is the press part. From the way I'm understanding it. Is you just up and said one day, oh, I'm not doing this. And any other regular corporate institution, where do you know that flies? You got to at least give them a day notice. Hey, look, I think I need a mental day coming up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to not do this. For and you to just fair. pull it. Well, one, no, wait, wait, wait. No. Let me get my shit off. Because one, it's a stunt, in my opinion. Because you could have you could have prepared for this, right? So one, it's a stunt, right? And then two, this is, what, this is the job. How, how you may say the gig is the gig. This is it. You have to do this. Right. And if you're not going to do it, don't don't try to jump and make it like, I'm not doing it today. And then this whole narrative gets spun about how it's because she's black. That's nasty. No, no, It's because she broke a rule. That's it. I don't care that she's black. Right. And she paid the fine that comes with that. Okay, but here's the so thing. So then on the back end of that, if the president of it says, I don't even want to speak on it. Isn't he well within his rights? She wanted to pay the fine and not pay? I don't have nothing to say about no, it. No, then he should answer questions the same way she has to because he's a 50 or 60-year-old man and she's 23. Agreed. Well, here, here's the Agreed. point that y'all are forgetting. <laughs> the reason why she backed out of this in the first place, she understood that it was sudden. If you look at her comments, she said, I know this is sudden, but for my mental health, I have to do this. So, so she was expecting the fine. So here's the thing that I will say about this. Now, there is a conversation with mental health mm-hmm. that wasn't here before when we were discussing Colin Kaepernick. It was not in the forefront as it is now. True. So, it. let's say, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. This could have went a lot more nastier. This could have went a lot more nastier. So, with that being said, I mean, she pulled out of a tournament. She may have won. Well, she probably was going to win. She's yeah, the best probably. fucking tennis player there is. She's number two. She's okay. Well, in my opinion, she's the best fucking Who's number tennis one, then? player that there is. I don't is. know, but she's number. She's ranked sure. number two. Well, if you're saying Serena Williams, she already beat Serena Williams, and that's you why can, she's the best one okay. to me. Period. Let, listen, listen. If you beat the Bulls in '96 one game, that doesn't make you a better team. You had a good night. I feel that. I feel that. But in an individual sport, can you say that, though? Because it's mano y mano. Yes. Okay. Well, true, because a 40-year-old Serena is not a 20-year-old Serena. Also. Going against a 20-year-old Naomi Osaka. (laughs) You're not at your best every day. It's a Fendi. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. 
fuck Makes all sense. the bullshit, like yeah. all the semantics. I'm saying you're not like, did y'all see um the shop recently? They had Hove on. Yes. Okay. During that show, uh, uh, LeBron said that 100% for LeBron was the day he got drafted. Mm -hmm. And by his first game, he was 99.7 or whatever. Yeah. (laughs) He even disputed that. He's like, I don't know where people get this notion that you're 100% every single, like, what? (laughs) It's not real. So, realistically, (laughs) what we're working with is... There's a period where we work between 95 and 100%. Then there's a 90 to 100. Then there's an 85 to 100, an 80 to 100. And then about 75, we got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, right. Right? It's too much now. Yeah. Right? We're, we're, it's too much influx in the marketplace. That's what they're speaking to. Right? Do I think that in the 90s was had? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do I think in the 95 and up, it was obtainable? Yeah. Yeah. But y'all chose to, because regardless of whether y'all had a stance on it or not, if she had to deal with the the media in the way that athletes have to deal with the media now, right? She was going to be pulled back. She was going to be 90, 85%, right? And what we forget is that most of the dominant black athletes on the planet and I'm not speaking to Naomi, I'm speaking in general, right? Yeah. They come from challenging situations. To say the least. Right? So now you want someone who comes from a challenging situation that looks nothing like this to come perform at 100% in this. This yeah. world that they don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> and just because they've been in it three or four years doesn't erase the 17 or 18 years that they lived in a different world. Because they're just now growing out of that. Right. So, okay, Naomi became a professional player at, let's say, 18. Ah, ah. Um, <clears throat> Bless you. She hasn't been anywhere near a professional athlete as long as she's been an amateur athlete and from where she's from. Yeah. So you got to give people the room to grow. Yeah. And then things begin to progress and prosper, and you begin to see... um change for the better not necessarily to fit or conform to anything but just change for the better yeah Uh uh-huh you know what i mean like i I don't know i just don't like that whole narrative of like oh you fucked it up it's like well who did i fuck it up for it's just me i feel that yeah i feel it's just me it's just tiger woods i feel that it's just naomi osaka it's just serena williams they have the space to do this because none of us have been there who's gonna guide them yeah because even the white superstar ain't been where she's at or he's at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not fair. Yeah, I feel you. Right. right. I'm sorry. I got past Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely understand that, man. Because I, I look at it like this, right? There could be levels of entitlement from the person that's paying you. I'm not making any ill will about the, the but that owners happens. of tennis, mm-hmm. but that does happen in a lot of sports and just and just corporate America in general. There's so much entitlement over the talent of what you have, and no sense of nurturing of your emotions. It's what can you produce for me? What can you do? What is your product? What is your talent? I need that so I can make this coin. A hundred percent, and there. At some point, I look at this younger generation right now, and I think they are on a very good moral code. Now, do they need some guidance? You doggone right. Um, but I think they're on. I think the ones that got some sense. I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about the the Bebe's kids of the of the, the you know that are born in 2000, <laughs> 2001. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking yeah. about the ones that actually got some sense when you talk to them. I like the ones that that. Those baby's kids? No, that's from right now. That he's saying need guidance. Yeah, I think they need none. Mm. Why you say that? Because the world. Are we going to teach them? Are you worried that we're going to teach them the old guard? Is that what you're? I and think, you think they need like to a, a certain extent? Yes, I think that the world they exist in. We, we, that's not. For we us. ain't got a clue. 
I ain't gonna say we ain't got a clue, but it's it's, it's just not our world. It's, right. It's if we know anything of it, it's merely a third. Yeah. But the other two thirds, they get better than us, and yeah. that's why we can help them. Yeah. But I don't know that our old guard, like I fight with myself about old guard shit, and I'm very welcoming to like. How's shit working? All right, cool. Let's do it that way. That's fine. It's whatever. Right. Like, I'm very nimble in that way. But, yeah, I think if we if we try to pigeonhole them who, who maybe didn't experience at the level the racism that we did, then we stop them from pushing the envelope where we can't see exists because of what we've experienced. I think that there's a ability to innovate that comes from novelty. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You have to give them that room. I think that's where it's birthed. It's with the novelty, right? Yeah. Like, like, I think novelty and know-how birth. Inspiration. New, you know what I'm saying? Like, know-how comes from us, right? But we, we as, the, and this is where the generation kind of, that around us missed. You have to allow the new generation to do new shit. Right. And be okay with the unknown in order to really push the envelope. If you want the new generation that's, let's say, five years younger than you to do what you know to work, then they're not pushing the envelope and you're stuck where you're at. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? It's like that comment that was made that if no one ever let the new cats be the new cats, you wouldn't have an outcast. I cannot picture my life without an outcast. That's true. What do you mean that I can't listen to outcasts? No, I, I don't want to hear it. It's, it. That's a very good point to make. That's, I mean, it, make, it makes total sense, man. Room. And I think that there needs to be some grace. Because I, I always tell people this. I said, I never want to be the 30-year-old that's looking at the next generation and going... No, this is a lost generation. That happened to me. I do not want to put that on the generation that is five or ten years younger than me. I do not want to put that on you guys. You guys are in a situation where y'all can really change stuff around because y'all are not damaged by, you know, other people's opinions. One thing I like about them, they'll take your opinion but they don't get stuck at your opinion because all of our opinions are limited to a certain extent. So they will say, well, that's Everett and Lou's opinion. That's Coppa's opinion. But does it line up with what I'm going through? And if it doesn't, I could take bits and pieces of their opinion, but at the end of the day, I'm not taking their whole entire opinion 100%. Now, that truth of that opinion may be concrete 100% from your perspective, how you lived your life and vice versa with me and Lou. You yeah, take everything 100%. with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? So that might, we're not saying that what we're saying, our opinion doesn't have some truth to it. It's just we're talking to a totally different generation that is growing up in a totally different time, yeah. seeing that different is things. seeing different things. And we just have to sit back and embrace our role of championing them, make sure they're not destroying themselves. Yeah. 100%. But also championing the fact that let these kids create. If something hinders them or causes them danger, we'll be there to help them and guide them as long as they're willing for the help. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the only part that bothers me is like, if I know you're fucking up and you're a young dude, I'm going to try to give you this game real quick. Right. Like, yo, listen to me real quick. You know what I mean? But other than that, live your life. As long as you're doing the right things, like I'm all I try to do is just steer dudes from making bad decisions. That's it. Like, yo, don't do that. (laughs) And, but I, all I I ever got taught was don't do that. I be trying to tell them like, yo, this is why you should chill out. Right. We you know got taught for me. I didn't yeah. do it. I rebelled because it was like, why? We you know got taught I mean? because it was a matter like, of what? right. If we got why? taught. We why? got we you got mean? taught. I'd be like, why did you do that, son? That didn't work. Right. <laughs> we got taught do this because your parents told you so. One hundred percent. Yeah. We didn't get the reason. Like, hey, there's a reason why I'm the having you do was this because I said so. <laughs> the reason because now you got to break it down. I was like, look. The reason why I'm having you do this is because there's going to come a day where you're going to need to do this and be responsible. That's why I'm having you do this. Hey, you did this wrong and it caused this issue. X, Y, and Z. It caused X, Y, and Z. There's always more to the shit you caused than you saw. 100%. Right. 
<laughs> Always. 100%. And that's the part that a lot of people, myself included in the past, find very difficult to grasp. You got to like, sit no. with yourself for a long time in front of the mirror to be able to grasp. No, trust me. As somebody who wasn't able to grasp that simple fucking concept for so long, you know what I mean? That's the hardest thing is you got to look yourself in the mirror and you got to recognize that. A lot of these kids, they won't take the time to recognize that. Furthermore, what's even scarier is they don't even have the ability to recognize that. Uh -huh. That's what's scary. And then even scarier than that, they don't care to have the ability to be able to see that. The shit gets deeper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, it's, <laughs> un, not, it's unfortunate. That's why I, I sometimes guilty as charged come off as like the grumpy old man. And it's just because bro, like, listen, I don't, <laughs> what Snoop say, I done seen everything but Jesus. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, come yeah. on. I'm just trying to help you out. Cause somebody helped me out and somebody helped him out. You know what I mean? Like this ain't coming just from fucking thin air. Right, right, right. And I think that people, I think when we look at this uh, generation of uh, kids, and especially with NBA players and how you got these people sitting in these stands attacking them, I'm like, fam, first of all, let's talk about this. People are now able to attend sporting events after a year, over a year long pandemic. Yeah. I know everybody wants to talk about mental health and I am not excusing nobody's mental health. But I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this with no filter. That's good. I don't like the mental health tag being used as an excuse for you to be ignorant. Yeah. Facts. When whole time Facts. you know what you're doing. That part. Facts. That waters down the seriousness of the issue that is mental health. You're doing nothing but degrading the people that actually have to go through this. As somebody who suffers from seasonal depression, lifelong depression, that shit not cute. That shit not funny. Because I'll be having days. Nigga, I had a day before I came in here. I had to wipe that shit up off me. You know what I mean? Like, that shit is real deal holy field. And not all of us have the convenience of growing up in an era that can just say, ooh, hashtag. You know what I mean? And then you can just get your shit off for being a dickhead. Yeah, that's that's that, that's not gonna fly here. Nah, there are bruh. people that are seriously going dickhead. through right. There are seriously people that are going through mental health and stuff of that nature, and it just should not be. I get very very annoyed when people do that. Yeah, and it's and it's very disgraceful. Like you are hurting the progression of what this young generation. I'm telling you now is going to be responsible for mental health actually being taken seriously in every fabric of corporate America. Of course. It going to, it's going to happen with them. It's not going to be our generation. So, let there's me whole mental this. health days, in, not to cut you off, but there's whole mental health days now in the corporate institution. That wasn't something when I was growing up that was a thing. Not at all. Fair. So That was called a sick day. <laughs> yeah. Stop being a bitch day. That's what they used to call it. You right. know what let I mean? Me, me there was no this. such thing as a mental it, health day. And, and I, guess, I guess what I'm about to ask is to your point. At what point because abuse happens. Yeah. Right? And so you find people that are like, oh. In all shapes and forms. I can say I'm having a mental health thing in a day off. And so you see both sides of it, right? And I've see, I, I currently see it. Where people are like, yeah, I don't, um, you know what? <sighs> don't feel like it today. I'm going to take a, I'm going to, I'm going to take a mental health day. And my man popping on a Tuesday. Gee. My man popping on a Tuesday. I don't even know how to make it stop. Me they won't even it. stop calling. I would have hung up by now. Right. You didn't answer on the third one. I'm hanging up, my G. Answer it, then uh, end it. And That's I'm not I'm leaving you a voicemail. And I'm not leaving you a voicemail. I'll send you a text as to pertaining what I wanted to talk about. I tell people straight up. I, I get a little bit saucy on the foot, but like, don't y'all know I'm potting today? <laughs> like, don't y'all know And you do the same shit, bro. But it's like, you, come on, you know what I do. You right. know what I mean? Like, you know what I do. Yeah, it's, it's one of those situations where um, I, I feel personally, and I'm going to repeat myself again, I think that this generation is going to be responsible for ushering in mental health on a serious, serious note to the point where we're taking it seriously. Yes, there's going to be people that are going to always be manipulating or trying to figure out a way to do that. But, and those are the only ones we're speaking to that we don't right, like. Right. For those of you out there that have for real problems, hey, if don't nobody feel you, I feel you. Yeah, we <laughs> definitely stand with those of you who are dealing with mental health. If don't nobody feel you, note. I we feel you. Do. 
Yeah, man, because it's it's, it's ridiculous, like that, bro. Like for it, real, it's very that shit it? is very real. Is right. what it is. So don't play with that. Right. Don't play with that. Let me ask you this: You're an owner. You're a commissioner of a company. What now? What you say goes. Yeah. That's the position you were in. I'm giving this hypothetical. That's the position you're in. What you mm-hmm. say goes. Mm-hmm. What positions or what certain procedures would you put in place for mental health? I mean, I would just do like corporate companies doing it now, right? Like incorporate a mental health day. Like this is separate of your sick day. This is separate of your PTO. You know what I mean? Like this is a time allotted for if shit gets too deep, and you just need to fucking lay in bed, eat popcorn, and watch Batman all day. Hey, fam, do your thing. But like, like any, like anything else in the corporate field, right? You abuse that shit, you out of here. Mm-hmm. That's how I carry it. Like, if you abuse the policy, like any policy set in place, if you abuse the policy, put a policy in place, but also hold those accountable that abuse that policy. Just like PTO, just like sick days, just like anything. If I abuse my fucking time, what's going to happen? I'm going to get fired, right? Right. Same thing should fucking happen. Okay, here's another day. Because we have recognized this is an actual thing for some of y'all, y'all actually go through it. Hey, here's something for you. However, just like every other fucking amenity of a, of a corporate company, however. You know what I mean? Like, right. But something should definitely be instituted, period. Because clearly it is, it is something that these kids are fucking suffering with, like, I saw the other day, and of course I was a grumpy old man about it at first. This kid kills himself because his girlfriend like broke up with him or cheated on him or something like that. He's a rapper, right? Rapper, right? But my thing is, and I say, okay, that's tragic. Another teen dead, another black teen dead. That's tragic. Let me go listen to his music. A hey, fam, I would never disrespect the dead. But these kids really have problems. When their songs are bang, bang, shoot them up. I'll kill you. Ah, ah, ah. I sell drugs. I'm the whatever. And you kill yourself over a girl at the ripe age that he was at. Right. You know what I mean? These kids need help. There's something that there's this break in reality for them. Cause that's what I think it is where they don't know how to deal with these life changing and life altering scenarios that just as a man, as a human, as somebody who walks this earth, you go through, they don't even know how to deal with something as simple as heartbreak. Right. We've all gone through that, fam. Every man has gone through a point where he is heartbroken. You know what I'm saying? And we just move past it. We weren't killing ourselves because somebody put something on social media and now a thousand fucking people are posting it. 10,000 fucking people are posting it. These kids are fucked up, bro, and they need help. Because because he could have been very well with that gangster shit. But he could have maybe not been able to deal with this, bro. Yeah, he may not have been able to deal with the phone. And and people want to talk about uh, <laughs> that narrative and also when it comes to bullying. I'm like, look, bullying is wrong. I get that. But when you are getting bullied by 100 people deep on your phone and they have it's that different. access to you, it's, it's different. Because I was going to say, there's nothing wrong with bullying. I think it's necessary. It builds character. It but builds, that kind of bullying? It, holy hold on. Shit. Now, hold on. It used to be one kid. Maybe two. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a kind of just pick your brain on certain things. You think bullying builds character? It does. However, and I know this because I went through it. The amount of years that you have to build your confidence back up, yep, takes a while. Like there have been times where I've personally like the bullying is done. I'm a grown adult and I hear somebody laughing and yeah. automatically I go, the hell is this motherfucker laughing at? Yeah. <laughs> is it me? What the hell is yeah, the problem with me? Yeah, like, yeah. And I don't, and he may not, they may be talking about a totally nothing different thing got shit to do with that you. ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. And because of the, the, the pain and the trauma and I hear that laugh, it's almost like if you hear, it's almost like the monster in the room. You it's, a, it's, echo. A, it's what the kids call a trigger. Right. It's, it's a, a trigger. It's, it's, it's something that snaps something in you, bro. Right. So when that was happening, I had to recognize it and go, bro, you don't know them people. Them yeah. people are laughing, minding their own business. I think what you're dealing with now is a trigger because of the bullying you yeah. dealt with yeah. when you was a teenager. Bro, I'm 33 years old. I still deal with that. I drink mm-hmm. too much. When I go out, I drink too much. Why? Helps me with the fucking anxiety. I can't be in this fucking place with all you fucking people in here. It 
bugs me out. So I drink too much. I go out, I drink too much. Helps me get past and cut through all of that shit. Right. That's a consequence of bullying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, and so amplify that by 20 now with social media because you got 10,000 people saying it to you instead of just the one. You a bitch. Right. Just from one kid, it used to fuck you up. Right. 10,000? Oh, come on, fam. Why do 10,000 people think I'm a bitch? Hey, hold up. I'll kill something out here. <laughs> now they're in your DMs you know going and that's crazy. What they, and that's what they think, man. Listen, and that's man, what they until think. That, that number tips past like 4 billion, you still got half the world on your side. It's, it's still too much. It's too much, bro. Okay. These kids need fucking help, man. For real. That's what I look at it as. Like, get these kids some fucking professional help. And I don't even say that as a knock. I'm saying that so very sincerely. Yeah, I definitely agree, man. Because we would stop losing top-tier talent. Yeah, I'm... I'm, mm, mm. Let me ask you... Top-tier. I asked Lou this question earlier. I'm going to ask you. If you were the owner or commission of a sports league or a CEO or chairman in general, Mm -hmm. what procedures would you do to mm-hmm. handle mental health or deal with disruptive fans, similar to what's going on in the NBA, fans not knowing how to act. Um, Antagonizing players. I have a point to fans because I didn't speak on that. But so okay, speaking, go ahead. speaking to the fans piece, right? Number one, there would be a, a statement made at ticket purchase, at ticket checkout, and at ticket receipt. And if you come with the fuck shit, you can put the fuck out. Define fuck shit. Um, because if they're doing if they're doing like teasing like a little bit any, of trash, that's what I said define fuck shit. Right, define it. Anything beyond verbal attacks on a player, you out of here. Yeah, you out of here. Like even if it's not our team, it it could be the competition. Just in fucking. Why are you putting your hands on somebody? You out of here. Don't spit on them. You out of here. Don't throw things at them. You out of here. Um, and the verbal statement would be and or like it would be like listen. Listen, listen. I understand that as a culture, we have gotten softer around verbal technicalities, right? At the same time, I don't want to be the league that stands on it. So I'm going to be like, yo, listen, that's not necessary. Boo, all of the woo, the woo, the woos. You can do all of that. You can, you can call Trey bald. No. All of those things are fine. But throwing things that's uncalled for, spitting that's uncalled for. Um, anything where the player is physically harmed, I'm a hundred thousand percent against. The verbal thing wouldn't be an immediate put out, but it would be up for review. No way, dude. I would. No way, dude. I would. You, so you're telling me by purchasing a ticket. To this game, I have to sacrifice my right to freedom of speech. I, I would never say these words, but if I'm at a game and I want to say that bitch motherfucking blah, blah, all these nasty things, I as a person should be able to say those things without fear of getting putting out. Now, the second you go, because you're already being nasty, saying nasty fucking things out your mouth. The second you go past that, you out of here. You can't expect people to just sign away basic rights. Like, I can't come in here and call you fucking whatever I want to call you. Now, if it's inciting violence, like, I'm not just saying some white dude can come in and just... <laughs> right. You, you know where I'm going with, with this. Yeah, know, you know what I, I mean? Well, you, we're see, not doing that, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and even if you do that, even if you want to do that, hey, look, that shouldn't be an immediate put out. You're a piece of shit, but come on. You want to tell me I suck? Great. You want to come in here... And offend me yes. by using a term that is used to refer to other people, human beings. It's disrespectful. You no, you can't come in here and willingfully just scream, yeah, you suck. F-. No, you can't. Why not? Because the same way that I like I And pers- be clear, I'm not saying that anyone should say this. Way. I I'm personally right. yeah, wouldn't be offended if you said you suck f-, because I am not a homosexual male. However, on the same token, if you came here and said, yo, nigger, you fucking suck, you cotton-picking nigger, I'd be offended. And you know what I would do? I and just, that, to me- That'd be the moment you get put out. Has to be equal. That'd be the moment you get put out. So if you can't do one, you can't do the other. And that's why I said, and I totally agree, and that's why I said, while it may be viciously wrong and very nasty, 
just like everything else I predicted, it's a slippery fucking slope. First, I can't say this, then I can't say anything. And I'm not advocating anyone, white people especially, go to a game and just be like, hey, nigger, like, watch your fucking mouth. You know what I mean? No. However, wait, 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 wait. However. Here's my great point. Like you were saying, if you ban one, you got to ban them all. So, yes, that person can come. But if that person gets his ass beat for saying some stupid fucking shit like that, that's the consequences that comes with being an adult. Yeah, but I'm not going to let but you people can't get their censor. ass whooped in my arena. Hey, man. So, you know, and then, but you're an owner. You got to think of it from that, that perspective, exactly right? Exactly why I can't let now, people get their ass whooped in my arena. But then it becomes X, uh, Jason Coppage, owner of XYZ, doesn't allow free speech. No, I don't allow ass whoopings. You want to beat his ass on the street? Go for it. But not in your arena. That's what I'm saying. So you have to allow them to say whatever arena, they want, but if you get to I scrap in, you're out of here. to fix this. But what you're not going to do is create man minced meat in my arena. Pause. Well, here's, here's the thing about that, right? Here's something that <laughs> see, I noticed. See what happens? You see? Your lungs hurt. <laughs> here's something Pause. that I noticed really quick. Um... I find it very disheartening that it takes an extreme level of violence for people to act right. Agreed. Bigger point. And know what they're doing the whole when they know what they're doing Just the whole be time. Just fucking decent human being. <laughs> It don't take it don't yeah. take too much effort to just be nice to people that don't look like you. I may not agree with everything that person does, but I'm gonna treat him and respect that person with who they are as a person. Why? I don't have to be mean and nasty, know what I'm doing. Cause think about it, right? I'm calling you every name out the book. I ain't gonna say what was said earlier. I'm calling you every name out the book repeatedly. One day you decide. I'm knocking ever the hell out. You I got, deserve that. You want to know why? Yes, you do. Buttons don't work. Popping on a Tuesday. And the call. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm calling him out of his name every five seconds. And there's repercussions that come with and that. And there is repercussions that come with that. If I sit over, if Lou is sitting over here, or vice versa, if I'm talking stuff, right, Lou's face, oh, you da 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 and I just start going off. And I'm not going off just once. I'm going off repeatedly. You're going in. Lou just says, all right, one day I'm going to put the pause on him. That day is today. Bow. Then all of a sudden I would be like, yo, I was, I was so, uh, I knew the whole freaking I time at, I that well, I was in the wrong and I didn't care. And, so, and it took, oh, so it took Lou to roundhouse kick me in my face and hey, damn it hey. hit me with body well, punches. What, what Tyson say, uh, this is a generation of people who forgot the shit you say on the internet can get you punched in the mouth. But right. wait, can we talk about Lou roundhouse kicking you in the mouth and what that would take? It <laughs> take a lot these days, bro. <laughs> I tell you, I'm not the man I if used to Lou be. I was just going, roundhouse kicks you in the mouth. If you and me going to the hospital because my shit going to be torn, and ripped, all kind I of shit. I told bro. you, at this juncture, you probably deserved it because that's a lot of effort for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I, if I resorted I to even, a roundhouse kick, he meant that fam, shit. you deserve that shit. He meant that shit. He wasn't playing. Mm-hmm. I tore my groin to kick you in the mouth, bro. Yeah, like, it's not like we're the same not height. Getting any You're mad tall. for six to eight weeks. My back foot might leave the ground trying to fucking kick you in the mouth, bro. <laughs> I, I would have had to mean that shit. That's some Eddie Gordo taking three That's shit. All I'm saying is if, if Lou wants to kick you in the mouth, it might. He might I'm not admit. doing that. I'm not kicking anybody in the mouth. He That's not four foot it. tall, bro. Like, it's not happening. You, you know anybody four foot tall? No. So I'm not, not kicking anybody in the mouth. Well, I, nigga, told, I, told I told haven't you. had the pleasure of meeting anyone. You under need four foot more f- uh, under five feet friends. How you tell tall are you? If you don't mind me that. asking, five foot one. Stop it. Two. Are <laughs> you being a little disrespectful? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Two and two thirds. I'm. You could have said at least five. I'm seven. barely five eight. I'm barely five eight. He's lying. I'm more like five seven because I slouch like see. I'm America, a fucking croissant right now. America. He is lying. On God, I swear to God. I'm I'm five Lou seven no knows, on a really good no day, God. five eight on an even better day. No bullshit. He's 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 five. If I stand up straight, if my posture five, is right, five six and a quarter. No, I'm not. You're not gonna relegate me to Tory Lanes in him, bro. I'm you not are a short, regular bro. person. No, I mean with, I'm an average size. With a person, black bro. cowboy on your t-shirt. It's tight, right? He's an African American. That's tight, right? He went yee-haw, nigga. That's why I bought it. He said nigga after. I like cowboy tees, but I was like, ooh, black cowboy tee. 
cooler. That'll work. Cooler. Yeah, I'll you've, take that one. You've never read, ridden a horse. Yes, I have. Now. I went to Montana. Not only did I ride a horse, I had a fucking cowboy hat on. And I had a goddamn name? 45 Colt revolver on my goddamn what leg. What color was the hat? Black? It was brown. Oh. Cowboy brown. And the what? strap, the, the fucking thing and everything was brown. What was the horse's name? I don't fucking know. They weren't my horses. They're Uncle Kurt's horses. Who's Kurt? On the wife's side. Her fucking uncle. He breaks fucking horses. He has a ranch. It's called Fallen Rock Ranch. Does he drink Kirk? No. He just... <laughs> It's so crazy because this big motherfucker, he looked like he could have played fucking football or something. He ain't no, he's, yo. But he does He's one of them Kirk. rednecks that's like, oh, you're wow. not fucking with him. Oh, you know what I'm wow. saying? Not, not redneck a, in the negative yeah. connotation. He's not racist he's at all. He's a brown no, redneck. No, I ain't take a, it that he's way. He's a jolly green country boy. giant. Oh my God, country through and is through. Is he a brown redneck? No, he's white. He's white, white. Oh, is it this brand? is on her white side of the family. Yeah, oh, white, he's white. A, he's a white neck. And, uh, he fucking has oh, a ranch, <laughs> white neck, has a ranch and breaks fucking horses, bro. He went out there with a the whip, Indiana Jones shit. What's the name of his ranch? Fallen Rock. You said what? Fallen Rock. You trying to turn it? I could see it. You trying to turn it into something? He is. That it don't need to is go. The, is the does the rock have color? <laughs> Shut up. When me does and her go up there, color? does huh? It has lots of colors. It's a fucking mountain. Okay. Listen, Montana in general doesn't have a lot of colors. You act like this dude called it White Rock Ranch. That's what I'm saying. You call it Black Rock. <laughs> See, here he go. All right. Here he go with the bullshit. You, you always trying to... He's a to, fucking white cowboy you, you, from Minnesota. You always trying Was he supposed to, to name something. it Black Rock? You trying to seriously squeeze a lot of disses right now. He tried it too, boy. He I tried to get it. <laughs> and it's okay. <laughs> All right, Capo, since you want to be squeezing uh, scandals and whatnot, hate. squeezing disses and whatnot, I let's go. Hate. Let's talk about this AMC short squeeze. Um, yeah, let's go. Give like give the people, this is a segment, I'm going to just let you go. You talk about it. This Whatever people need to know, you just explain it in the most simplest way possible. Go ahead. Floor is yours. We're talking about the AMC show, right? Yes. Okay, so they bought another set of theaters, correct? I'm not tripping, right? Their stock, yeah, they had access. Their, their yeah. IPO went yeah, public. They, yeah, they bought another set of uh, theaters, and then uh, people were like, "Oh, it's lit! Let's buy a bunch of shares." And they were like, "Well, if that's what you want to do," and then people bought a bunch of shares, and now they're like, "Well, here we are. Movie theaters still aren't quite open, but we're here." That's because retail investors don't look at fucking data they don't do due diligence they don't know what they're doing it's just a stock pumped up by hype it's yeah. going to crash i know that I'm like what are y'all doing i'm not upset it takes though. five minutes of reading can we create a stock well not a stock but a crypto we could let's create something and then take it to market on some bullshit and let's just see what happens not all of those catch man it's it's hype it's what they decide to right so let's create to. some hype I want Kanye West and 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 uh, what's the other brown skin fellow's name? Travis Scott. Mm. And I'd like both to create of those. the Litcoin. I'd like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Litcoin. And every time you purchase it, I don't care what app it is, you get a it's lit. It says it's lit. Yeah, it's fire. That's what I want. It's fire. I mean that, but that's the basis of all crypto. Because I give would buy that based on hearing it's lit. A lot of people would. On command. Like, I would buy in a smaller portions. I wouldn't be surprised if you see artists and enterprising individuals start to do that. Even if I sell 10,000 coins and the market cap is fucking nothing, I sold 10,000 coins. But they have to hey, figure out how to hey, hey, you know, what, keep that going. What would you do if when you bought a coin, it went, oh, oh, oh. I mean, me personally, I go by fundamentals. I'm not buying that fucking coin. I'll buy a coin because it's funny. You're like, just lying. to say I hold it. Just to say yeah. I hold it. Yeah. One. You're I, lying. One. I, I, that's all I One, asked you. And if it's like, it has to be like a fucking nickel. But it says, oh, oh, oh. it's got to be like a nickel or lower. If Jay Z puts out the Hove coin, you buy it. And it says, oh, oh, oh. I'm only buying 444 coins and then I'm done. I might what? buy 4,444 coins depending on what it comes into market as. What if? That's why the AMC shit was bullshit. What, it came to market $30. I'm not buying it. I'm what if Diddy puts out the, a coin and it says, can't stop, won't stop? I mean, that's cool, but. Uh, but it doesn't say, oh, oh, oh. 
I'm not listen. I don't buy shit coins. I but just what is don't it going do it. to do long term? Is what I'm saying. I, I like, go by fundamentals. What can this coin actually do? That's why I like this stock is is fucking hype stock because it's it's everything that like it's, it's fucking Dogecoin, bro. Like, look at the fundamentals. Theaters aren't even open all the way back up, and they're introducing. You guys don't see this as a way for the top to just get money. Sure, I'm not saying there aren't people that didn't make money. I'm not saying that because I'm sure there's a lot of people that made money off this shit. However, people need to learn how to do their own fucking due diligence because some of y'all are stupid as fuck. Well, I think it, I think in the grand scheme of things, I was like, yes, that is true. That some people need to do their due diligence, it's get with somebody that knows too. exactly what is happening. Not if even you don't, some. oh well, yeah, true. Uh, get somebody that is very, 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 because when it comes to money, you can't play. Yeah. Very, very knowledgeable over what is going on and they what they're capable of doing and stuff of that nature. So it's very, very important that you get with somebody that can teach you the game and then you apply it. Yeah. Especially when it comes to stocks and especially when it comes to cryptocurrency. E buy the dip, bro. <laughs> yeah. And if buy nothing else, buy the dip. Buy the dip. <laughs> if nothing else, buy the dip. <laughs> I would have missed that on some big money by not buying bro, the dip. Bro, what? I found Ethereum when it was fifty cents, my dumbass. Are you kidding? Tony was trying to tell me about Bitcoin when it was $1,000 a coin. Are you fucking kidding me? Fam, I'm not missing out on that again. Yeah, I mean, not. we're not financial advisors, and this is not financial advice. I so don't buy anything based on what right. we say. <laughs> Absolutely. But, yeah, that AMC shit, bro, I just, it was a lot of retail investors. You know what I mean? And you knew it was some bullshit when he's like, oh, yeah, we'll give you a free bag of popcorn. For what? I don't need a free bag of popcorn. What I need is some money. Yeah, it's true. Like, the fuck are y'all talking about? I, Whatever, though. People are going to always fall for those schemes. It's been happening since the beginning of time. I mean, it's not like this is the first time in the history of markets and in the history of people. People have not been scammed out of their own fucking money. Is, is scamming the way to the American dollar? It depends the, on for who it is. No, it doesn't. What it depends on is when you get in. Because all of the, the greatest families in this country were built on illegal commerce. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know that I would necessarily call it scamming because that seems very particular. I say illegal commerce. I put it under hustling, a catch all of hustling. Whatever that may embody, whether illegal or not, I say the American dollar is built on hustle. Commerce. Illegal. I'm, and I'm saying illegal or legal. Either way, it's built on hustle. Okay. That's respect. Either either which way, because you can get it both ways. We've seen that time it, and time again. Nah, it happens. It's it's the hustle that That's determines what's next whether for or e, not. Man, we about to get e a motherfucking uh, massage parlor. <laughs> All the happy endings. Can you imagine have. e doing a podcast with a masseuse in the back? A girl masseuse giving a girl a massage, and e's just up here talking about whatever he talks about. I can. That's insane. I think I think it would be great, right? Like, because you could have four titties in frame and E. And E's talking about the most, like, he's talking this shit. Right, but four titties. Because you got the masseuse titties. And then see, the woman you see how I didn't say that, right? I was just like titties. two hot girls, like one giving the other one the massage. He instantly you went threw, to You threw titties. the layup good enough so LeBron <laughs> could dunk it in. I'm not, I, I, I saw that. You I'm not surprised by that. All I was saying is I'm not surprised by that. But I didn't say titties is what I'm saying. I didn't so, bring it to You didn't okay. have to. He was going to so, take okay. it. I didn't bring it to titties. Let me ask you guys this last just, question. A gif of I'm going to ask that. you this question, and then I don't even need to be here anymore. I'm going to ask you this question. There's three of us, right? Yes. Do you think... Which is more compelling content, the three of us or four titties? Four titties. All right, so let's move on. Well, it depends on the platform. <laughs> nope, four titties. Twitch? Nope, four titties. It's tits. YouTube, maybe not. Oh, YouTube, YouTube, getting, YouTube, YouTube is getting you out of there. here. My point still remains. Depends on the platform. Patreon. Twitch, I'm getting titties. Patreon, I'm getting titties, pussy ass. I might get everything. We own, we own it all. Titties. I might get everything on the Patreon. Titties win, goddamn. I might get everything on Patreon. We got three out of four platforms that love titties. I don't. I, I don't know. The only Patreon I subscribe to is Joey and them. I don't know if they do titties and ass, but I would imagine it's Patreon. You can do I titties mean, I seen some, ass. I seen some ass on their YouTube. Well, then the, well, mm. they do slip through the cracks. You're not gonna see like full on porno. Don't worry, E. You're safe. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what? You might see some twerking. Oh, the well, that's, extended. That's, it's time for the twerking. 
Oh, that shit was terrible. So real it quick, was. I just want to kind of get to this next topic. Is there anything else that you want to recommend to somebody that is in the stocks about AMC right now? Before we go to Don't the next do it. topic. They it's already too missed it. Yeah, yeah it's too late. It. Oh, okay, cool. It's they too late. It. Do your fucking due diligence. Go find something else. Be smart. Play the game the right way. They missed the wave already. Don't put fucking money in that you can't afford to lose. And don't be a bitch. Hold that shit. If you believe in it enough, hold that shit. Otherwise, don't put your money into it. That's how I invest. If I don't believe in it, I'm not putting my money in that shit. And if I do, I'm holding it. Right. Stop buying bullshit. So, let me ask- Lou has never pulled out. That's a fucking Fendi fact. No, sorry. <laughs> You're not going to get me to co-sign that bullshit. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. You tried it. This is not the baseline. This is not Pirate Radio. This is not any of those other shows. Do you have witnesses? I am not, uh, I, yes. <laughs> yeah, she was there. I have one witness, okay? He doesn't pull out. Don't go into any more detail I'm on not, that because this is public. <laughs> I never said that. I he never goes, said these words. Grrr. I've never said that in my life. You have. I've never. Well, you didn't. It wasn't you. You're right. <laughs> well, now if I say I've never made any listening. <laughs> yeah, I've made everything you say coming to question. All right, E, what you got, E? So, <laughs> we have Little Dirk that has been name dropping a lot of the, what a lot of rappers do when somebody passes, paying tribute to those that passed on that he was friends with. Um, He's not saying he smoked them, is he? No, 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 no. no. It's just, so, is there ever a point my my question with that is, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think for therapeutic reasons, you need to do that to uh-huh. move on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But at what point, is it okay at some point to just stop doing that? Because it may have an effect on you if you linger too long? No. no. I think the frequency should dwindle. So I'm, ne- f- I'm never ever forgetting, but it's not like I'm doing it every day either. I'm not celebrating every day. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't see it as death. It's your home going. So I'm yeah, not going to think about it every you day. Go crazy, but as, as you grow and as the music begins to progress, you can't continue to speak to this deceased person. I I disagree. Okay. If I want to keep making music about this shit for the rest of my life, then I can. I didn't even know Nipsey, and I'm still not over that shit. No, and like I you agree. can't you can't tell somebody how to like grieve or miss all that i'm saying is like me personally and this is just me i'm not going to talk about it all the time because it makes me sad i'm never going to fucking forget right now somebody wants to put it in twenty thousand fucking songs until they're to the point where i am with my loss then do what you want to fucking do bro but what you're not about to do is tell me like i should just get over it fuck you bro no, I'm definitely not yeah, telling yeah, you. No, you can't yeah, tell exactly. somebody how to grieve. That's the quickest but way to I end this. I also think friendship. that from a market capacity standpoint, as an entity that is Lil Durk, there's an end. Well, because at some point, if you're looking at it as the machine, that's not going to be marketable anymore. The yeah. fans, people have forgot, unfortunately, because of how fickle people are, they've forgotten Vaughn, which is disgusting to say, and I never want to say that again out of my mouth. The Vaughn shit However, a that bit. will happen. That will happen. People won't care anymore. And so the machine is going to say, hey, nobody cares anymore. Stop saying that name. Do something else. You know what I mean? 100%. That's the machine. And it's fucking disgusting. But It's not disgusting, but eventually- No, I'm going to tell you why it's not, right? On the one hand, you are paying homage. Fact. On the other hand, whether you like it or not, there is a financial gain to be coming from this. Yes. At the point where- Homage has ran its course. It's become detrimental now. And you ain't even making no money off this shit. What are we doing? I'm not saying you can't mention your slain man. But I'm going to need something else. But you have to make the songs go beyond that. That's the machine. Yeah. That's yeah. The machine. That's what. Me personally, like you were saying, if, it was, if it was up to me, I would do whatever you want. The bro. marketplace works. Mm-hmm. You that's, can't that's do facts. anything that forever. Is, that is very facts. Yeah. You have to change. What homie say? I think it was Mir Fontaine he said. Uh, they saying I stayed the same. Or, or no, they say I didn't change. Why would I just stay the same? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why would I just stay the same? No, yes, I changed. Absolutely. I absolutely changed. How about you? No? Unfortunate. I, I look at it like this way. Um, if you do not change your perspective for the better then you've missed out on the point of life. The point of life is about evolution yeah. and redefining who you are. Yes, you can keep some core morals, but it's about that. that and part. if you're going to stay 
in the same mindset that you were 10 years ago, two years ago, five years ago, or however many years ago. You lost, homie. You lost. Even if you don't change something the day after or the day before. Like, dude, progress. Figure something out. There have been times, and I'll just go in. There have been times where I've given people advice. There have been times I've given people advice. They don't take it. So why am I going to keep opening up my mouth for you not to change your situation after I spent an hour, two hours, 30 minutes breaking this shit down? Yeah. Breaking everything down and telling you this is what you need to do. 100%. And it's the point that you didn't even listen. You didn't even listen. You didn't even you do not listen one thing and I applied do. not one thing, but you didn't even listen. He just said, just said one that. ear not the other. You didn't even listen. You don't have to do exactly what I'm telling you to do. Take it with a grain of salt, but at least hear me out. Right. You know what I'm me saying? Personally, like, at least hear me out. Me personally, I used to get, you remember, I used to get pissed when somebody didn't take my advice. Yeah. Because I'm sitting over here, I want you to win, and you don't even want to win as bad as I want you to win. So now, so now, you got all the answers? Oh, you ain't listening? Great. If you ain't put no answers in, great. I ain't saying not a doggone thing else if you have the same problem again and you're feeling bad. You won't take my advice. I'm wasting my time. I forget who said it, but he said, sometimes the best advice you could give a nigga is no advice. Yeah. Sometimes it'd be like that. You gotta be able to recognize that. For sure. Sometimes the best thing I can do is just shut up and fall back because I can't can't do no right. When you get to that point, you can't be told nothing. Yeah. Live your best life. You're going to have to fall on hard times, on some rocks, off a cliff before you listen to me. I was trying to help you from that shit, but all right, go ahead, though. That's how it's got to go. Yeah, yeah. That's how it's got to go. So, I want to get to these uh, next couple things. We brought back a segment um, that we used to do, and that's Friendly Fire. So, we're only, basically, these (laughs) next three topics, a couple sentence or less. The first topic is Snoop Dogg named Def Jam executive consultant. Your thoughts, gentlemen? I think this is a good move. I think he can really help the future artists that are in there. And I think he can be the bridge between giving the artists more equity. You guys' thoughts? Cool for Snoop. Who cares? Def Jam sucks. Their active roster sucks. Let me be clear. Their active roster. I'm not talking about YG. I'm not talking about these cats that's really active and really out here doing shit. That's the only exception. Other than that, who fucking cares? Great for Snoop. I'm very, very happy that Snoop, of all people, is getting that level of recognition. Who fuck cares? For that label, anyway. I'll take that statement and just add a nuance to it. Great for Snoop. Bad timing for Def Jam. Yep. Nobody cares at this juncture. Yep. There was a time when this would have been the move. And it would have been great. Would have been like, holy shit, Snoop. We don't give a fuck right now. Yeah, no. Right. Def Jam is too far gone. This Not would have been so good far. 10 or 15 years ago. Jay did it and nothing good came out of it and Jay touched it. It's fucking rabies at this point. Fuck from around here. There's, a, there's an exception to this rule because there's a couple artists on there, but I believe they're bigger than the label. They just happen to be on this label. I feel like these people like a uh, do like YG. As soon as that contractual obligation is up, he's on. What? YG don't need no fucking Def Jam? Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. What? That's why fucking G. You kidding he me? Was, he, he only signed there on Legacy. That's what I'm saying. Even the young dude, yo, YK Osiris, you think he need them? No, stop. No, like, great for Snoop, but like, yeah, I guess with me saying who cares, that's crass, or, you know, that, so it's a better point is bad timing, because who cares? Yeah, if Snoop definitely. was on there during, like, peak Snoop days, holy moly. Yeah. Donut shop. My God. My the label life. that Death Jam would have been. Are you fucking kidding? Oh, my God. All right, yeah. what else you got, E? Because that wasn't it. So, uh, also, uh, sad news, but uh, a home going uh, for Clarence Williams, who passed away at 81. He was the actor in Mod Squad and the actor in Tales from the Hood. So, we just want to give a... The Mod Squad actor that did all the sound effects? No, he was actually on the show, like on, like on the show, Old like an active with character the, with the gray. Right, but he also did. He mouthed all the sound effects. If I'm not tripping. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't. That's that's the part I don't know. All right, wait. But definitely um, a shout out to him. A very diverse actor. Somebody that is one of the most. I think he's one of the most underrated uh, actors. Period, and also a very underrated African American actor. Like he's one of those guys. I've seen him in tons of stuff, and I just can't. I don't know his name. 
You know what I mean? He's one of those actors. And I and I hate that it's like that for him because he's a special talent. So definitely uh, rest in peace to Clarence Williams. My take oh, on you said Clarence. Is, I'm, eh. I'm looking at the wrong name. Oh, okay. No one. I, I never want anyone to lose their life, but do I care about it? Is it news to me? Eh. Well, you were. Nah, I, mean, I don't think he was attached with this guy. No, I mean, people. I can't name you a single movie he was in, bro. Yes, you can. No, I can't. I'm Mod, telling you. Mod when Squad. I, when, when I looked it up, I had to be reminded of who he was. That's what I'm saying. There's no influence there for me. I mean, God rest the dead. Jesus Christ. You, know, you never want anybody to lose their life. Right. You know what I mean? But was it news for me? Eh. Socks. You know, rest in peace. That's fucking terrible. And real quick. That's a father, brother, son. You know what I mean? What do you guys think? And I'm switching gears here. What do you guys think of Cat Williams' comments on cancel culture should not wait. affect comedy? Wait, wait, wait. That nigga is a legend. Yes. Uh, I guess. You don't know who that is? I know who it is, uh, but I don't know any of the movies he's been in because I don't care about any of the movies he's been in. You do know the movies he's been in. I don't care about any of them. I couldn't name you one. He's been in a lot of stuff. He just probably, he's one. He's so underrated, he probably just... I guess, but I just think that speaks to me not liking him as an actor. He didn't stand out to me. I mean, we're talking about the loss of life, so it's nasty what I'm saying, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. in, in the totality, totality of news... That's all I'm saying. Not a big deal for me. Oh no, bro. Y'all not about to make me look bad. Nah. <laughs> fucking bad guy. Nah. Fuck you guys. If someone that y'all didn't fuck with died, you'd say the same shit. So I fuck think, off. I think, I think we gotta get. I think we gotta as get far as the cancel culture shit with Cat, uh, I kind of agree. Um, I just feel like comedy is right, one right, of the right, last. Right. Uh, Clarence Williams was a half baked. You've seen, I know you've seen of half-baked. Of course, I've seen he's in. Oh, he's in Reindeer Games. Don't remember him in Reindeer Games. He's in Empire. Don't remember him in Empire. He always plays the gangster role. He plays a forgettable role. <sighs> you didn't see Tales from the Hood? I don't want to talk to this Yes, I've seen anymore. Tales from the Hood, but he's not, it's nothing memorable to me, bro. Fast lane, no? Okay. Also, I'm the type of dude that, like, with black movies, I always love the love movies, bro. Oh, okay. Brown sugar. Oh, you, you know only like black love and basketball. I love okay. black no love. No kind bro. of other black. Black okay. love is beautiful, bro. I don't care. You're not, no. That shit. Love and basketball? Knock it off. The wood? Stop it. Baby boy? <laughs> I can go down this motherfucking list, bro. Yeah, no, no, no. Never mind. Black love movies are the best, some of the best movies. Eat, let's move on in, in, <laughs> okay. in, into blackness. So, uh, what are your thoughts uh, oh, on yeah. Cat Williams' yeah. uh, comments on cancel culture uh, within the world of comedy? Comedy is supposed to be the one of the last holy grounds, right? You can say whatever you want. It's all jokes. You can say whatever you want. You shouldn't have to be judged up there. You're a comedian. You're trying to find the funny things out of bad situations. I'm not opposed. Say what I, you want. I, I think Cat Williams is of the, the generation that is the last generation to push um, saying things that people may, maybe aren't comfortable with. I think saying things that people aren't comfortable with are a part of pushing culture forward. Mm-hmm. That part. Um, I'm all for this. Like, I don't, he's not wrong. The bulk of the greatest comedians have been to it, some extent silenced based on what cancel culture is. Let me, also make one thing clear. Cancel culture ain't real, but it feels real. It's, it's very true. Well, the hypersensitivity gives it They're life. not your target audience. See, what happened is these comedians got like mainstream coverage. Right. And they started getting used to 80, 90 million people wanting to give a fuck about what they do. Fucking Netflix specials. Right. The reality is That ain't real. And they could get off what they've been wanting to get off or have been getting off in the stance that it was. But because they got used to their peak versus their average, you have to deal with them rebalancing the equation. They're fine. Most Most of the comedians that we love are fine getting the audience that we exist in the problem is they had the moment of feeling mass media, mass commerce. Yeah. And so they remember Exposure. that peak and they think that's norm. That's not normal. Yeah. 
it's been relegated to the normal now as well. It's not normal. Exactly. They think it's normal. It's not normal. At all. So once uh, they get back to, you know, um, you know how like certain currencies have like an adjustment period where like, they, they balance out? Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, that shit peaked and it was like worth this. And then it's like, yeah, but it was this. Yeah. Kind of what the crypto but market see, that's, is doing now. That's the slippery that's slope. Happening. You have to be careful in the things you ban, the things you can say. You can, it's a slippery fucking slope. They're having it's a lot a easier to do it than to go back on it, man. They're having a moment of like- 100%. Uh, let me figure this out. 100,000%. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. So with this last topic, I want to talk about the thousand pages of emails that were uh, exposed through the Freedom of Information Act that featured Dr. Anthony Fauci. So uh, what was your initial reaction, you guys, looking at this? Don't not care. Not surprised. Yeah, don't I'm care. Not vaccinated. Surprised. I, I, I don't. I felt I'm like not surprised from, this the, was leaked. from the jump, there was information we weren't getting. And I think this is just exposed the scope of that information. But we knew it existed. We knew they weren't telling us everything. We just was like, well, how much are they not telling us? And now we know, we're like, oh, <laughs> you motherfuckers. But we knew they, was, they wasn't telling us the whole truth. I, you're not going to get, here's the thing. I don't think you're going to get everything. If they had put out them, e- them emails right at the middle of the pandemic and nobody's vaccinated, uh-huh. do you have any idea how much fear, paranoia, exactly. static that would have caused exactly. when you realize that they don't even know how to navigate people, this? People forget there is such a thing called the scientific method. That's what people don't understand and they fucking forget. Never in the history since the space race have we invested more money into science. So all these people that fucking say, oh, they can't figure out this in this amount of years, but they figured this. Out. Well, this is what happens when you flood money into science and the development of this type of shit, right? That's number one. Number two, I'm fully vaxxed. If even the possibility Vax of me getting this, perve- oh, yeah, 100%, if it, okay. if it even has a 2% chance of preventing giving whatever I have to you and to you, I'm fucking doing it. All this other wild conspiracy shit that they say, the chips in you and ah, ah, ah. Bro, stop carrying one of these and then have that conversation with me. So long as you carry one of these, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. This thing listens to everything that you do. This thing listens to everything that you do. This thing too. So if you're going to be all like that, right, don't let me ever see you at any of these or you're a fucking hypocrite. Mm. That's the worst. The best is they weren't lying. They poured the money into the science and I didn't give you potentially what I carry. So if I had AIDS, I should get that to a bitch. If they came out with an AIDS wait, vaccine wait, wait, and wait. I knew I was, no, I'm making a point. Wait, 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 if I, if I, no, no, cause I'm making a, I'm making a, no, I, I hear your point. it should just, be illegal. If I, I know I have I AIDS and there's a vaccine inclusive. and there's a vaccine, right? But you wouldn't give it to nobody booty hole. I wouldn't give it to anybody, period, is what I'm saying. But you excluded all men from getting it from me. And you. women. Okay. All right? All right. Let them clean it up. It needed no cleaning up. It did. Whatever. You're selfish. But if, <laughs> if, if, if that was the case, it's illegal, right? It should be the same fucking... I mean, I don't know if you can pass laws, all this. I don't, I don't, I'll stop there. But what I'm saying is, if I know that there's a chance for... If I get this, it's for the betterment of the next man then I'm going to fucking do or it. It's woman. the same reason, or a woman. It's the same reason why when I'm born, I'm vaccinated with certain things. You can say whatever the fuck you want to say about it. You'd be the same motherfuckers who wear your mask under your nose, which I saw a meme that I, I, I see it every time with people now. It's like, dudes, if you were to zip up your fly, you wouldn't leave your balls through your zipper and then your dick over your pants. Like that's how you motherfuckers look with a mask that's under your nose. Your little fucking dick's hanging out. Put that shit away, bro. I'm going to wear a mask forever. This expose how nasty people are. And it's not weird behavior. They do it in Asian countries. If I'm sick, I'm going to wear a mask to prevent my fellow man or woman from getting whatever it is I have. That's regular practice. So you're going to wear a mask on just like Tuesday? If I'm in a public setting, you fucking right. Well, I think if one thing that we can recognize is that the fact that if somebody's walking around with a mask, like you can't look at them like they're an alien anymore. It used to be it was a, a a thing of mystique in America. Ooh, this artist, he wears a mask. Ooh. Now it's like this point of contention. Hey, suck my dick. Y'all niggas is nasty. This this thing, man-made or not, proved that a lot of y'all don't wash your hands and a lot of y'all don't have basic hygiene. Y'all should have been doing that before the pandemic. Y'all should have been washing your hands with your booty hole ass fingers. Nasty motherfuckers eating food and shit, spreading this shit. Y'all, y'all are nasty. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's first and foremost. So whether it was man-made or not, look, the government always and has proven they're going to make money off of us, right? We could talk, yeah. we could go back to Reagan and talk crack. Y'all really want to get into why, you know what I'm saying? Lou Cheney definitely got them boo-boo fingers. No, <sighs> I, I wash my hands thoroughly. And that's why I will be I wearing the mask. I got the fingers. Yo, Maryland, I don't, I don't think they have to wear it anymore. Yeah, they, they lifted, definitely went they, into they lifted a the mandate. Gas I'm still wearing mine just in case. And I was one of the minority wearing a mask. And you know what I did? I wore it. Yeah, I'm in a wear. I, I, the shit, worst I'm part is like, so my office, right? The firm that I'm at, they're talking about, um, yeah, uh, we're going to require everyone to get a, a vaccine, which by the way, look this up, doesn't violate HIPAA. They can absolutely ask you if you've done it and make you do it for as a condition of employment. So that's number one. Scary times. Well, right? at least it's hours. not weed anymore. Well, well, Hold on. Hey, they, this can, is, they can do that? They can repeat do that. that. Repeat that. So if you don't have a vaccine- they can ask you for proof of a vaccine or you can't come back to the office and it could be grounds for termination in at-will states. Because you're dirty. Because you're not, apl- you're not adhering to now company policy for you to have this vaccine. So that shit gets deeper, mm-hmm. right? So you're in there. I don't know. Say we all work at three in an office and we don't know each other like that, right? That's right. the only reason we don't have masks on right now, right? Let's say I don't know you from fucking Joe Blow. I just work with you in an office of 120 people. I don't know where your nasty ass been at. You could have been breathing this shit in and now you come into the office and and because we have the vaccine, we don't have to wear the mask. Fam, that's, you might have that shit. The shit's not 100%. Right. You might have it. Now you give it to me. And I, did, and I brought that up to my boss. I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. I don't know where these people be at. <laughs> like, I don't know where you're at. You don't know where I'd be at, to be fair. I could have went to Mexico last week. And you don't know where I'd be at. Like, and I'm, y'all not going to know where I'd be at. So that's why, I, listen, everyone should just get it. Just be able to get it. His, I will I mean, say this. The last corporate job I had, they did want you to report, um, like, your whereabouts. If you travel. I, I will say this. This is what I will say. What is traveling to you? Anything across these motherfucking state borders when it first started. That's now, why I didn't go nowhere. I stayed my ass right in the house. And then when that shit broke, then I left the country. So, so let me say this. I'm not tart. I'm the type of person, if you got the vaccine, cool. If you didn't, cool, whatever. My thing is this, right? I think it is a little bit, you pushing people's freedom by forcing them. And I know what the, the ramifications are. You repeated, you said them and I get it. Yeah. My personal opinion, you playing a dicey move by forcing people to get a vaccine if somebody says, yeah, it's a good they're point. not getting it. It's uh, a good point. It's not a bad point. It's a good point. It's for me, personally, for me, personally, I'm a guest on your show. So for Lou, Lucini, personally, Lou Go, this is me. Fuck you if you don't have it. <laughs> and fuck you twice if you're like, I'm not even going to get it. And fuck I- you a third time for being an asshole. No way, man. I don't want anybody else to have what I could have. Maybe that's just me being a bleeding heart, but like, yo, if I could potentially even carry this shit, I don't want anyone to have it. And if this gives me 99.5% chance of not doing it, I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to ask you two questions. They can kill me either way. These niggas got all the guns in the world. They can either kill me with a fucking shot or they can kill me with a shot either way they want to go. So what are y'all talking about? Go to another fucking country, burn your passport and get off your cell phone. Suck a dick. I'm going to ask you two questions. Is your mom a nurse? Yes. She was did, a nurse at Hopkins. Did she give you the vax? She got the vax. That's not what I asked you. No, I went, I'm an adult man, so I went and got it myself. Yeah. And she got me vax when I was a baby. Of course. What? Uh, I don't want you to be the kid that gives the other kids measles. Let me explain something to you. The fuck? The only person that's giving me the vax is my mom nurse. Well, that would hit different. If I was a mom nurse, too, I'd, or if I had a mom nurse, I'd be like, your active mom is a nurse. Active. I'm saying if she was still an active nurse, I'd be my like, My mom's yeah. not an active nurse. She teaches nursing. Oh, my mom was like, yeah, I'm getting it. Told me the one to get now. that. No, yeah, mine did too. But guess who's giving me my vax? I feel you, yeah. I don't know that she could have got her hands on it though. Because De- she's De- been retired for a very long time. Listen, so. Deborah Ann, yeah. if you don't pull up with that shit, yeah. it's not happening. Yeah. And she knows that. But she's already set it up for me to get the vax from her. Yeah. And she's gotten it already. Yeah. And then when my daughter turns 12, she's getting the vax. Yeah. My girl's already vaxxed. Yeah. We big vax over here. Yeah. Big big vax energy. Big vax. Like, I don't... E, come on. Mm-mm. No? Why? Not my Get choice. Nasty not my choice. Boy. Not my choice. Hey, look. Nasty I'll be boy. honest with you. Like I said before, I'm but the type But you look like of... a nigga that washes hands, though, so it's okay. I wash my hands. I make sure... Dude, my hygiene <laughs> is top-notch. 
I could give lessons on hygiene. That's how great my hygiene. You wake is. up in the morning, put hand sanity in his coffee. I mean, listen, <laughs> no, I'm not trying to poison myself. Calm down, though. My thing is this, right? Um, from my personal standpoint, I decided not to take the vaccine. Not looking at y'all. Don't look at me as a villain. I ain't looking at y'all as villains. We ain't doing that. I'm from the standpoint of I looked at certain things. I looked at, okay, history of vaccines in terms with African-Americans. I looked into that stuff. Every reason you're going to play to, I agree with. Yeah, I get that. But, but my sh- medical professional said she took it. And but I was like, still, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, not, and I'm not knocking it. I said, but for me, I said, you know what? For now, I'm not taking this. Let's see where this goes. My, I do not want to turn was, around and be like, yo, they put this in there. I thought it was the stupidest fucking thing when Charlemagne, as a fucking voice of the culture, said out of his mouth, y'all have a history of fucking with black people with vaccines or whatever he said. I don't want to misquote people, right? That is so fucking stupid to say and is the biggest piece of misinformation. My thing was like, mom, dude. Sure. America doesn't care about black people. You, you know fucking about this asshole. This isn't me. black and white right now. It's fucking every. They want everybody no, to no, get this no, shit. No, 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 no. They want the fucking hicks that don't like your black ass to get it. They want everyone to get it. Let me explain. But to you. here's a. But here's You're a never going to complete convince black people as a culture. I no, I get it. Hey, that look at me. We shouldn't make our own decision. Unless based you know on, me, you don't know that my dad's black. So right, but based me. on the fact, I that get it. They lie to us. It's a ski. I. They they lie to black people. All the fucking but time. But when we speak to a, sp- a very specific situation with a very similar situation, they lied to us. But Cabo, this is the whole world, Craig. And the it's not even just vaxxed. America. But the, the point is they're trying to get... Fucking New Zealand was shut down. There's blacks in New Zealand, okay? This isn't a white black thing. They were fucking shut all the way and down. They're racist against fairest, I mean darker racist skinned people. Or not, other- they still have these people and the direction was still You're stay wrong. your ass in a fucking house. Yes. Get this vaccine. But okay. Telling people to get the vaccine and making it available for people to get the vaccine is different. And we've seen that in our own country. So we can't just do that. If we're talking about, like I said, if we're talking about our country, yes, I'm talking about in totality. People are taking this very American article. First of all, the vaccines that are approved by the FDA are not available globally. I'm hit, but this is, people forget that this is a unique situation in that it is a global pandemic. People have their, have their, have their fucking lens zoomed in. Why shouldn't we be helping? What do you mean? We have been. America has been developing the fucking vaccines for the whole world. That we're not making available to the world. Bro, that's just not true. That is true. That's not true. I see it. Everyone is doing their own thing. It's not that we're not trying to provide aid. It's that, hey, person from Europe, you can't come here. We're trying to get our shit under control. That's person different from, from Europe. us sharing the recipe. Europe is using Moderna, is using Johnson Johnson. These are global companies, not American companies. This is Europe. Which is not a third world country. But if we we can't be expected as the one what country are we doing in the world in India? to provide what are we doing in India? Worldwide. What are we doing everyone? in India? What are we That's doing in India? That's an impossible standard. What it are we doing in India? It doesn't matter. When you're talking about distributing India this, is the epicenter right now. What are we doing there? I get it. This That's is my where, own. That's where your pepper comes from, nigga. I'm already hip of the Where's ramifications come that from? come from closing off the other countries. Where's but when we're, to, when we're talking about this, this, where people have shut down borders, it is necessary to shut this shit down. I'm not saying that I don't know, that I know everything and that closing the borders is the right thing to do and all this other shit. All that I can do is go by the science, which means sit your ass at home. We're going to try to roll this out. Working as a global community, not just America, right. focus on what we so get from India. We as fuck a, that shit. We'll we get it as later. America, which is by population the third or fourth biggest country in the on the planet, mm-hmm. have found something we're comfortable with disseminating to our third largest population on the planet. Okay. We not willing to help India? Again, we're speaking. Logistics. Think about what it would no, cost. No, what it would We're involve. We're speaking with about people. sharing the recipe. You, I came to your apartment. You made me adobo chicken. Sure. 
I watched you make it. Sure. So now niggas can make adobo chicken. Sure. Why can't Indian people make the Moderna facts? Do you know for a fact that the U.S. or any government, any world government for that matter, is not trying to get it in yes. that because they're a third yes. world country that they're not able to manufacture yes. and keep because up with the Because the drug demand. is not regulated by the country. All the research it's was done It's regulated here. by the company. We weren't the first country with a vax. I get it. We, but we're also not a third world country. Logistics right. and all that shit is much more difficult and I'm not going to pretend to know it. India, and therefore say that why aren't we doing anything for them? Because I don't India know what's going India could produce on. the vax. So then why are you not looking to the Indian government as to why they're not and why are you looking to the American government? If we've given the recipe or the recipe we, is no, fuck, fuck getting it from us. Fuck getting it from us. Fuck getting it from us. How do we know they couldn't get it from the English because they have it as well, right? You then have to what look the internally. You have to look in. They used uh, Johnson & Johnson and Moderna. I don't know about so Pfizer. Us. It's still us. But it was disseminated through them, right? They have the recipe. There's nothing stopping Europe from going to the G4 they, and say, or they G7. They have a boutique to sell it out of in Europe. There's nothing what stopping I'm saying is the English production. countries the English countries from bringing it to the world stage and saying we have it and we can disseminate it. Yeah, so is. look at the Indian government. You could say this. Why is North Korea not going to do it? Because they have somebody that says you're not getting it. You have to look at some point internally of what's going on there. Right. But what I'm saying is, is the person that's saying no internal to that country or are they us? Who knows? I don't know. I do. How? It's you don't have us. a Bro, we don't have classified information. We're not a f- it's federal It's not officials. even classified. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I I it's get It's readily available. I get it. We're saying no. As an American people, we are saying no. I get it. You people are less than and you cannot be cured. Agreed. That's fucked up. Mm. I don't know that that is in this scenario, that's the fucked cre- up. Okay. Do you want me to t- tell you how to make your cars produce less carbon? Maybe we keep that insulary. This is literally killing people by the hundred of thousand. We need to share. I agree. That's all I'm saying. I agree. But at what point does the actual government, because you're, you're speaking from a very optimistic point Well, the only of view. reason the drug is being distributed in this country is the FDA. Let me get my shit off. Uh-huh. You're looking from a very optimistic point of view, right? There is no, while I agree with you that we should share, there is no fiduciary responsibility. You have to worry about the alliances that we have with other countries. You're talking about shit no. that's on the, wait, 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 wait. You that's can on sell the, it. That's on the world stage, right? This is not just what directly affects us because what directly affects us could be argued that it affects the world stage. And I'm no fucking poly science person here, right? I'm just speaking from a fucking layman that looks at things for what they are. Right. There is no obligation there. What you're speaking to is to a moral high ground. When has the government ever had a position of a moral high ground? I agree with you. It should be disseminated. However, why do we have responsibility to give it to India? We don't. We don't. When there's other countries that have it. And I I agree. Sell it then. But then again, you're talking about a third world country. These motherfuckers don't have running water. So while we hear you talking about this pandemic, our people can't even bathe in clean water. This may not be a priority for that country. It's a luxury for us to walk around and say, I'm going to wear a mask when I go to the office to work. Meanwhile, these people are like, work. I can't even get clean water. I'm going to tell you why it's a priority. Because the men in that country are bathing in cow shit. Because they, that's their last hope. Yeah, but are the rich motherfuckers doing that? No. Yes. All right. Okay, well, I'm ignorant to that. No, so. I take that back. The rich motherfuckers I don't think are it's holding happening, rallies which bring people together who have COVID. Mm. That's I, what's happening. And I, you're speaking to a different Sheesh. point. I'm not saying that the world's governments aren't standing to profit from this. I'm not saying that. It's a great way to profit. You lock everybody up, people you open shit back up, and up you raise in, the fucking in, prices. That's an entirely different India point, though. are pulling up. That's an entirely different point. Wild parking lots. Yeah. Trying to get oxygen. I'm. Uh, to we can speak all day about the ills of India. I get it. There is a lot wrong with that country, but there was a but lot it, wrong with that but, country before this. Yes, but this has created or, new problems. Country, yeah. No, it's a country. I, I I get it, but I'm just saying, like, there was problems that existed there before, 
right? So COVID has to add to it when there are answers? And look how much we did. I'm not saying that it's not the right thing to do. It absolutely is the right thing to do. All I'm saying is let's live in reality and understand who the fuck you're asking to give this to people and how they look at it as this is none of our responsibility. All right, Shit, yeah. we can't even get our own people to fucking do it. What are we going to do giving All it to right. these people? All right. It's wrong. I agree with you. It's wrong. However, I, I'll stand on the mountain. It's very wrong. It's Indeed very wrong. It's better. I'm just speaking. I'm I'm being devil's advocate. Okay. Because I agree with you. If yeah. anything, at the end of the day, like it's fucked up that the fellow man and woman don't have access to this. It's disgusting. Like there it's is disgusting. a line that is like it's disgusting. Life. It's disgusting. And you 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 disgusting. should just get these things at life. If you read into it, there's different scales of humanity, and we will not never read. We will never. Well, no, it's a it's an evolutionary thing, and why we have not been a a, a spacefaring species, and it's because we can never get past the level that is just caring about the next man, doing right. things such as providing India with the vaccine, doing things such as you know whatever the case may be, living peace peace in totality on Earth. That's why we can never become a next level civilization because we're too wrapped up in hey fuck you. And that's fucked. That's fucked. Because essentially, that's what you're saying. The government is doing that to a country that needs it bad. It's and like, that's why we'll never go past what we and, are. And, and if, you, if you tear away the humanity piece, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just say we just, we're just we banking on more humans. More humans have a, the absolute propensity to spend more money. So even if we wanted to take the humane piece out of it, there's just more people, and more people have a higher chance of spending more money. It's not even like you could be selfish, and this still makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think that I, when I look at it from a high view, I think the thing is you're talking about selling it right in India, but again, it speaks to the point that these people can't uh, can't even have running water. So it's like, okay, you can go there and sell it, but now the onus goes back onto the government on whether or not they're going to sell it because the average person who has to bathe in the Ganges cannot afford to get this vaccine. So now you're looking at the government like, what are y'all doing to get it to these people that have to resort to doing this? And let me not say resort because I do realize the holy significance of that river. I'm just saying speaking from an ignorant first world motherfucker, right? Like I don't have to bathe in the Ganges. I can go turn on my fucking hot water and shower still. You know what I mean? Mm. So to those people, you're asking them to buy a vaccine. Some of these people may be completely illiterate. You're asking people to read documentation, to read literature, to just be informed on where to go get it for free. Shit, there's fucking Americans that don't even know where to go get it for free and can't read. That's why it's so that's why I view it as it's so difficult in places like this. And we have to look at the local government like, yo, what are y'all doing? Because y'all should be helping your fucking people because this is on the world stage. Yeah. We can try to provide you help, but if what are you doing for your people? Oh, nothing? You're disgusting. I get it. I get it. And I don't want to be sniped by some fucking top elite assassin from like India. Take him out. I Let's love Indian him. food and that's a very ignorant thing to say, but Take I think the little bit of Indian him. culture that I've been presented, out. I love. So Take him. Yeah. I we, can only speak ignorantly. Like I want to see the Taj Mahal. I want to go there. Indian people are beautiful him. people to me. The food's delicious. Take, I want to go. Take him. Absolutely. So please don't kill me. Like that's right. not an indictment on India. I'm not a government official. You know what I mean? Right, like yeah. I, I, I fuck do I know? All I know is I fucking love Indian people, so and the food. Yeah. So. Kill him. <laughs> Jeez, you please did. don't. I want to see the beautiful Great. architecture that is in India. Please don't. Take him out of here. Send yeah. it. Oh my goodness, Capo. Good grief. No, he deserves it. Oh man. Come no on. way. <laughs> Jesus Christos, yeah. Oh, crazy. See, see, you see how racist he is? He's never met Jesus or Christo. I'll pull it up in my text message where you said it first. Nah. <laughs> y'all had that battle. Nah. Y'all had that battle later, man. Look, man, I appreciate y'all for both coming on. Yeah, man. Oh, this is fun. I stayed quiet during that argument for one reason, one reason only. I want to hear perspectives, and that's what this podcast has been about. Yeah. I appreciate you guys for having that discourse. Honestly, this has been, uh, as I was sitting here with you guys, um, I've been here for a lot of great moments. Um, and some of those moments played back in my head that I was talking to you guys, even the, down to the humor. I miss this. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you guys for coming uh, for a one-off episode. Uh, but I definitely want to thank you guys for taking time out of your guys' busy schedule 
Uh, hey, it's to not a problem. Talk man. about. Yeah, but I do have a question things. for you before we get out of here. And what is that? Oh, shit. What was your last Pornhub search? <laughs> shit, I knew it was fucking coming. I just didn't know when. <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> I mean, because look, come on, E. I, look, I, got I think Google. the last time we discussed this, it was what? I got like Google Petite Chrome. Latina. I got Google Chrome queued up. Cross. What was it? Like, look, come I can on. put you right in the search bar. You ain't got to look e, at the rest, it? E. I just want to know what, what you would type into this search bar. Fat booty Latina gets I'm, BBC. I'm, Is that what so, you're so, up? so let's, let's, let's. Here's what we're not going to do. We are not. Look, you could type it in and you didn't have to see it. Sexy, La- Sexy Latina nun gets the word damn, of God. Is that da- what you <laughs> I know damn well Meets you Meets a man just... of the cloth. He Is definitely like stepsister porn. He listen, loves it. Listen, he listen. loves it. <laughs> Any kind of family related porn, he's like, I'm tapped in. Listen, I'm fucking tapped in. Tapping in. Stepson fucks hot mom. <laughs> he's right there with oh, it. Listen, about listen, porn. listen. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed e. except for the maturity. E. I'm not answering that damn question. E. I'm telling you that right just now. Just one time that for the question. one time, bro. This I'm not so, answering that one question. So, but you're not, you're not, you're not disavowing the, the fact the, that you do go on Pornhub and do Pornhub porn search. I don't. I'm not answering that question. Right I'm not answering that question. Do you think E keeps it PG with his porn and he like gets on TikTok and goes like Big Bank? He just looks First at the all, Big Bank challenges. What? That's the how he gets on. E don't play like you. E has a Pornhub account. What do you think his username yeah, okay. is? Okay, I got, I got that kind of account. Are dialed in. What is his username? <laughs> what is his username? Come on. Big E hole. <laughs> <laughs> with his birth year it's super simple this on that big, note this has been another y'all. edition of Audio <laughs> Airstrike y'all take care y'all have a good one sons of bitches <laughs> <laughs>